Hello! Welcome to Sunday Night. This is not Cthulhu. This is Cyberpunk. We had some last minute adjustments and people can't make it. And we're at the finale of the current uh, leg of the adventure that we're in. So I thought, let's wait. Let's have everybody there and let's do some more Cyberpunk. Because we had such a good time last time. We have some familiar faces. We have some returning people playing the same characters. And we have some other folks joining us and uh, jumping in to the cyberpunk red world so we're not just doing cyberpunk 2020 we're doing cyberpunk red we're using the jumpstart guide kit that is out there to do this Woo! and um we are playing an adventure out of the classic book forlorn hope oh, cool. eight, eight one shots right there nice. we've got lots of material for cyberpunks so there's gonna be some more of this because i love it um, thank you to everybody who's joined us, who is here. I see some new faces. Very much appreciated. Um, hopefully we entertain you for the next little while as we make our way through uh, this adventure. What we will do is I will do the round table and give my folks here the opportunity to plug what they have going on. So I will go down below me to Leopold. What What's going on with you, Leopold? Uh, not much going on with me, but there's some stuff going on with the company I work one of the companies I work for, um, Zombie Orpheus has a Twitch channel. Uh, there, I found out recently playing mostly Savage Worlds. Uh, so if you're into that, that's cool. But regardless, uh, they have a bunch of films on YouTube and uh, Amazon Prime and stuff like that. They're all like a tabletop RPG theme, gamer comedies, and a couple of other uh, genre films and stuff that are really good. Um, but yeah, it's a good, really good stuff. They're uh, they play the the main day that they play is on mondays at uh i think it's either 6 p.m or 7 p.m uh pacific i can't remember but <laughs> that's okay uh, pretty hey bad. you've done your job you've plugged them <laughs> people yeah, can look up the times go. if they really are interested yeah check it out it's super good if you ever seen gamers dortons rising it's the same actors and stuff and the, that do the live stream so i just Probably. awesome thank you i just realized that i have actually um a lot of these people here have started content creating and doing various things. Normally, it's like one or two people, and then we move on. But we have branched out. So to my right, I'm going to go to Oak. Uriens? I don't know what to call you. Uriens um, is what Yeah, it's Oak's just always easiest. Uh, so yeah, I just started dipping my toes into the streaming stuff, uh, doing some PC game stuff and uh, RPGs. I know Monday mornings, typically, I have a and d game going. Friday nights, either Matt's doing something I'm in or another group out of California. Yeah. Did we lose you? Uh, he went mute. I saw... Yeah, the, the little mic is uh, crossed here. You accidentally hit your mute button, I think. We, we lost you, Oak. I don't know. We, we, we lost you at everything. California. <laughs> A group out yeah, of California. Some groups out of California and just doing some PC games and RPG stuff. So, yeah, just getting going. So, if you want to stop by, I appreciate anything you want to throw at me. And where can people find you? At twitch.tv slash Uriance, U-R-A-E-N-C-E, at the moment. I'll tell you what. So, I, I just learned that I've been, in my head, I've been pronouncing uh, Oak's name wrong for two years. <laughs> well, How have you been pronouncing go by Oak because it's easier. I, sh I always thought it was urines. Mine's Leopold, not Leopold. Is that how I said it? Okay. Leopold? Leopold. That's how he, you know, he might have said it like that. I don't know. I was just correcting him just in case. All right. All right. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> check out Oak. Check out what he's got going on. He's just started a channel. Um, he's a regular here on Grim Perilous Gaming. So um, we like to support our own. To the right of him. This is on my monitor. I don't know if it's the right or left for you folks watching. We have <laughs> Jeff. Jeff, you are creating some stuff. Do you want to go ahead and um, push, plug what you've got going on? Yeah, uh, a couple of weeks from now, I got a booklet going out on uh, drive through RPG, which is for Zweihander. Uh, it's going to cover um, a bunch of injury tables, um, piecemeal armor, a bunch of new drawbacks, some other options for combat. So that'll be a couple of weeks on that one. And then hopefully soon here, I'm, I'm not even sure, it might even be Friday, they're going to start a Dark Astral adventure uh, that I've been working on, and uh, we're going to give that a go, see how that goes. That's right. 
And again, Dark Astral. What is... I'll, I'll let you answer this time because I always answer. What's Dark Astral? <laughs> well, it's it's set, you know, in the in the far future. It's just like uh, Zweihander would be, you know, a companion to Warhammer Fantasy. Dark Astral would be 40K. There you so, go. And so that... Space, you know, power armor, heavy marines, a lot of lasers, whatnot. Should be good fun. It is currently... Uh, available as a chat book and you can get it on drive through rpg we have the affiliate link down below i always like to plug it um because it helps us out if you consider if you buy things through drive through rpg it would be um, very much appreciated if you use that link down below to purchase your pdfs or your yeah. print on demand books because uh it helps the channel out and um again it's really really appreciated so if you're gonna if you want to buy forlorn hope or you want to buy the jumpstart kit for cyberpunk tonight um you can get it the link down below and below Jeff, we have Nora. Nora, what have you got going on? Um, I'm uh, currently uh, working on um, our own tabletop uh, RPG named Umbra. And uh, you can go and see that, see that at RPG Umbra on Twitter. Uh, we're working on getting some uh, some short stories published on DriveThruRPG uh, to uh, sort of get people interested in the world and uh, sort of tell people what it's about. And uh, that's been going on. It's a fantasy RPG. We're having a lot of fun with it. Um, and aside from that, I'm also the, uh, the like uh, virtual tabletop developer uh, for through Roll20 with uh, the uh, uh, folks at Grim and Perilous here. That so. is right. Yeah, and like I was saying before the stream, I don't know what we can and can't say. Daniel's here, so we got to be careful. Uh, yeah, no, it's <laughs> <so funny. laughs> uh, there are things that are in the works that are being developed for Roll Twenty, uh, specifically for Zweihander, and should we just say there will be announcements coming soon on what those things are? Yes. Okay. That is, that is, that is, that is all fact. that I am uh, going to say. I like it. Awesome. awesome. So keep watching for news on that, Nick. I left you for last because I wasn't sure. Do you have anything you want to plug yet? I know he's got some stuff in the works. And now you're muted. Oh, let's try this again. Nothing to plug yet. I'm getting there soon. I've been... Uh, I'm, I'm going to be focusing on Savage Worlds. I have run a game over on uh, Oak's channel. And uh, I'm a player here with Matt pretty frequently. And uh, will be a content creator soon. There you go. Ominous. I played in uh, Nick's game on Monday night, and it was a hell of a lot of fun. Oak and I played in it, and... Yeah, it was good. And Ethan from our Tiny Dungeons game, who plays Case, the chain-smoking old lady. We played in a, yeah, a one-shot that Nick ran for us for uh, Deadlines. It was awesome. Is that a Neuromancer reference? I don't know. Case? <laughs> I don't know. That's just his character, Evan. Did I call him Ethan? Evan? Uh, no, the last name is uh, Close, though, so it's Case Close. Case Close. <laughs> oh, it's better. Yeah. yeah, she'll suck back on her cigarette after she gets a kill. <laughs> Case Close. We need to yeah. get the sunglasses to put yeah. on. Yeah, that's stream. hilarious. Okay, so that is the roundtable introductions. So we're going to hop into Cyberpunk Red. We've done this once before on the channel. Fortunately, uh, my audio was really messed up on it. So this is kind of like our, our, our redo. We're not doing the same mission. Previously, we did the mission that came in the Jumpstart Guide, uh, the apartment. We had a lot of fun. We did a lot of crazy things. Just ask yeah. uh, ask the two that were here yeah, last dope. time. Yeah. Do, do we get to keep the helicopter? <laughs> I don't know. I was debating. Um, <laughs> you've technically earned it. but That they was would crazy. Come. Hell yeah. They would a car and a helicopter and a uh, a fire truck. I'm assuming yeah. they would come back to get it. <laughs> they wouldn't just like uh, let you keep their their helicopter. Uh, understood. You're a bunch of nobodies, right? Who def who yeah, defended no, the apartment building? The we step above nobody right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Step up. <laughs> we don't have any rocker boys, do we? Because I was going to give them their um their notoriety level, but we don't. Yeah. Oh, that's what we got to do. Is character introductions? My God! Before we jump in, we got to tell everybody who and what you are. Um, we should have done that when we did the intros <laughs> around the table. Jury, go for it. We'll make this short and sweet. Who are you? Yeah. What profession are you playing? And yeah, that sounds I good to me. Go by jury. You muted yourself again. <laughs> you said we heard. I go by jury. 
holy crap, what's wrong with this thing? I've got the uh, space bar set off, but it's uh, messing up. Anyway, I'm playing Jury. He's a tech, and pretty much if it's a gizmo of any kind, he's going to jack with it and uh, make it do something it's not supposed to. All right, Jerry. Crichton. Yeah, uh, Crichton's a solo. Uh, he's the muscle of the team, heavy armor, heavy weapons, ready to go and take care of what needs to be done. That's right. Drew McNally. Uh, Drew is the net runner. They are, uh, yeah, uh, this is my first time. So, like, I'm excited. Awesome. The net runner. I was worried that we weren't going to have a net runner going into this. It had not been claimed. I was like, well, this is going to be a lot yeah, of like yeah. uh, boots to the ground, guns blazing. What is it called in this one? It is the Thursday night throwdown. It was Friday night firefight yeah. original. <laughs> uh, crash. I am a nomad, which means I'm the driver and I've got this uh, sweet ride right behind me here uh, to cart us around the city. You just oh. had trouble. I didn't even notice that. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I noticed, so I don't know what, I haven't played Cyberpunk Red before, so that I'm new to this as well. Uh, all I care about is that I have a very heavy pistol. Never seen that before. And I have rippers. Yes. Carbo glass claws in my fingers for cutting. You have, yeah. Or you could like, you could change up. They could be like Wolverine claws. Sweet. pop out Sweet. right and you can slash people up but yes you have rippers some people have a, a, a filament wire that they can use to cut through any sort of flesh and or plastic i don't know if any class has that and then there's a class that also has big nucks you got yeah, like these, these are canadian weapons these are yeah, canucks not canucks big nucks knuckles you got reinforced metal knuckles for smashing things so yes some of you have cyber implants Last but not Sweet. least, we have That's Vance me. Vix. Uh, I'm I'm playing Vance. Uh, you need anything? I got you. Uh, as long as it doesn't blow me up in the process of getting it, we're cool. Vance I'm playing Vance. a fixer. Vance Vix, the fixer. <laughs> I didn't it's actually fixed. realize that. I didn't realize that the rhyming <laughs> scheme there That's, until we started. But that's why I asked you that when I was setting up like Vance Vix the. Mm. Fixer, and I was like, "How's it spelled with an F or a V?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, it works! It works. All right, it does. <laughs> so we're gonna assume that the two of you that were here previously are the same two that took place in the apartment. Since then, maybe some of the crew has moved on, or you guys have gained some notoriety with your little your little standoff you did in protecting your apartment, and you've you've attracted some 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 more to your gang, and that's where we get Vance. And Crash, I'm going to say Crush, Crash and Drew joining the mix have come uh, due to your notoriety. And um, you guys are now starting to see jobs roll in. You've received word from uh, someone by the name of Kronos to meet them at the bar Forlorn Hope, which is a notable bar where you go to pick up jobs. If things need to get done, there are people there looking to hire folks off the books off the records where you won't get caught and if it does you do get caught it's not going to go back or get back to the people who hired you you're basically you're you're expendable it's high risk high reward sort of jobs let's put on some music i forgot we got some music here kind of made it last time you guys hear that yeah we can <laughs> so you got your volume that you can adjust on your end Oh, Adam is here. Thank you for the cheer, Adam. Oh, there we go. There Where we go. Where is the... Uh, I'll figure it out. On the cog. Top right-hand side, the cog. Click that. There should be, like, a master music volume, I believe, and you can slide that down to lower the volume on your end. Or I can do it. No, I got it. Okay, very good. That's going to make it a nice level of mine. Party people. DM Chuck. Chuck, you're here. You told me you're tied up. You son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, Adam's here, so. Adam's here. Uh, so That's Chuck right. That's right. Up. If Adam's here, then <laughs> Chuck appears out of nowhere magically. Poof. <laughs> he materializes. My BFF has spoken. I must, uh, I must appear. All right. So you guys make your way 
to the to the whereabouts <laughs> of this bar. It's in the the north part of Night City. This takes place where we're in the setting of Night City. Night City is like a, a, a fabricated city that uh, was put together, if I remember my lore correctly, in the late 90s or early 90s to the 2000s. And what it is, it's the space between, I think it was Los Angeles and San Francisco. There's basically one big urban continuous sprawl there, and they banded together, and they made their own city in that space, and it's called Night City. So that's where this is based out. If you guys are over on the West Coast, in Los Angeles, or in California, sorry, in Night City. So Forlorn Hope is over in the, the north quadrant of the city. And you're taking Crash's car there, of course. You're traveling in style. And you want to avoid any, you know, nice. gangs or riffraff along the way. So personal uh, personal mode of transportation is always the best option. Is there anywhere you want to stop off along the way on to Forlorn Hope? Anything you want to pick up? Anything you want to get? Or you just want to go there and see what Kronos has to, has to say? Well, you know what we're doing first we're shopping list. all right are you guys going in there armed what do you what's what's the uh idea here your very be... big pistols and big knucks and stuff we'd be idiots to not go in there armed let's just be honest here at least with something uh concealable i'll just say i think i might put my assault rifle in the trunk of the car if that works out yeah my knucks are concealable in my arm so i'm good you can uh, i'll make sure I'll make I'll make sure to wear a heavy enough coat to hide a, a heavy pistol in. All right, sounds uh, good. Later, waist. Chuck. Thank you for dropping in and dropping them bits. Always appreciate it, sir. Woo! Chuck, Charles, <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. All right, so you guys head to Forlorn Hope. You pull up in front of this like dilapidated building. It's a it's a two story building. Uh, out front, there is a, a door. There's people lined up. It's like a nightclub sort of setting. There's a there's a guy at the door, a big gorilla-looking figure standing there at the door. He's got cybernetics. All, like, half big. his face is covered in cybernetics. He's got cybernetics up and down his arms. You could tell, like, his muscles are reinforced. He's got big knucks that are they're visible. He's got some, some rippers that could pop out any time. This guy is built to look after this door. There's a, a, a flickering neon light above or sign above that says forlorn hope and it's kind of just flickering you can hear the buzz as you pull up and open the doors how as you pull i'm up... to... oh, sorry go ahead i was just how many stories tall is this it's two building. stories this building okay and forlorn Good hope question. is on the uh on the base floor main floor you guys pull up where do you want to park that car there crash there's a lot of people eyeing it up as you guys pull up to forlorn hope yeah, I'm actually, I'm going to park it across the street, okay. and um, I'll stay in the car and keep it running just in case there's uh, trouble. Oh, the true wheelman. Nice. <laughs> yeah, Adam, you can stay. You can stay, even though Chuck's gone. <laughs> Wait, do I have to go? <laughs> Maybe he'll come back. Uh, who knows? Yeah, so you're going to pull it around and let everybody know that, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep the, keep the motor running. Yeah, and I'll cruise the block. Uh, once just to scope things out, make sure there's nothing suspicious around. Sure. And then have the it assault, ready to go. The assault rifles in the back if you run into trouble. It's right on top of my shotgun. Nice. Okay. So the rest of you, I'm assuming, yeah, are we'll heading into Forlorn Hope. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna. Um. <clears throat> I'm gonna make sure I look good, of course, before heading in. Uh, brush my hair real quick fixer, take my right? comb out and, yeah yeah take my hair uh take my comb out fix my hair put a little uh put a little wax in my mustache you know get it ready get ready for the uh for the uh club experience always one of my favorite treats <laughs> i thought you're a rocker boy there for a second <laughs> no no just like just like to party yeah all right all right yeah so uh, vance is fixing himself up Looking in the mirror and the wind, reflection of the mirror, getting ready, waxing his mustache. Crichton, you're you're stowing your your assault rifle in the back. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you guys get out and you're doing that, and you know, you see you see people are carrying openly carrying weapons. You know, that's just the state of uh, of of this city. You know, if you don't carry a weapon, you're crazy. So you can see firearms and such on people, and 
you know, people are looking at you. There's, like I said, there's people lined up outside the club. They're staring at you. They're looking. They're kind of pointing. You hear people snickering and laughing. Uh, you see folks that are like completely decked out in gear and tech, um, who are who are way more advanced than the group of you. you you're still a, a, a little ragtag group. Well, let's just strut right up to the front door. Hell with them. Yeah, you strut up to the door, uh, Crichton, and that big bouncer gets in your face. And, uh, what's your business here? Says, we got business with the boss. Step aside. <laughs> the boss, which one? Hell, kind of don't even Cr- Kronos was, was the <laughs> name of the guy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kronos. Kronos? Uh, what's your names? So what's it matter? Your boss wants to talk to us. There's a lot of important people in here. I'm not going to just let anybody saunter in. Uh, I'm just gonna look. I'm gonna kind of walk up to this guy uh, as uh, my character is actually probably very intimidated, but he doesn't really show it. Um, and it's gonna walk up and kind of look, look him over, size him up, you know. And he's just gonna say, uh, "How greasy does that palm have to get for you to stop hassling us and just let us <laughs> in?" Yeah, yeah. You see a grin crack in the corner of his his mouth. Now we're talking. This one's got the right idea. Mustache here. I walk up, I'm like, why are we going to pay this guy when we're supposed to be here? <laughs> His name's Jerry, and your boss is waiting on us. If he, we don't get the job done, he's wanting done. You know what? You can pay up for that. I don't care. And I turn to start walking off. Uh, nice. He, he lets out a up. grunt. Oh, yeah, hey, 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 hey. Come back here. Come back here. All right. I... All right. Go on in. I put my money back up into my into my uh, shirt, just kind of smile. I don't like hard asses around here, and he kind of gives you a shove, Jerry, as you walk in. Just no, start, start being about my one, friend there. Uh, Drew says, walking past them. What did Drew <laughs> say? You can always stop being one, then. Oh, oh. <laughs> and and uh, my character just goes, he just kind of just keeps walking by. He just <laughs> snarls. And it, the rippers pop out of his hands as you go by, and it's kind of like an intimidating fashion. I just sort of so kind of give an awkward grin. <laughs> are they? Are they like? Is there, is there a way I can make them go back in? Are they like digital enough? Oh, that... like if you want to hack them? Mm-hmm. That is a great <laughs> question. I I don't <laughs> know. Uh, it's just not really written in the rules. I don't know if it's going to exist in the full version, so I don't. I can't say no. I can't say yes. You could. You could attempt it. We could. We could try for it. Do we still sure. eight? Wouldn't he have to be jacked into something though? You do, but you have a pocket thing, do you not? <laughs> I do. You have a cyber deck, a pocket sized uh, machine used for net running. We have. Hey, Jay Gray's in here. Jay Gray, are you listening? <laughs> can you do that? Can we do it? Let's try it. You can always ask for forgiveness later. Go for it. Like as you're walking in, because you have to be a certain proximity. You can even walk in and like jack into the, the deck and, and give it a try. That's or you just want to do it right in front of him. Right in front of him, like I uh, just like sort of like uh, brush my hair out of my face while I'm doing. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's your interface. Um, I'm gonna give you a difficulty of uh, a 14 on this. Just go ahead and I immediately walk away when I see this interaction start to occur. And just, oh, like, ah, I'm just gonna oh, go get a drink. We have a critical miss. What? Ah. But, uh, first roll of the game excellent <laughs> loving it <laughs> so you have Doing to roll another already. d10 so it must have automatically done this for you because you roll another d10 and you subtract that result from your first result um so that's make the only way you... pop out and stab you in the throat that's <laughs> the only way you get a, a negative on your roll yeah his claws so you you start to try you try to re- like retract or put them back in and uh they lunge towards you like it's like drawn to you instead of pushing in they're pushing outward and they lunge towards you and uh what do these things do for damage who's got who's got rippers nick d6 d6 all right let's just roll a straight d6 2d6 doing great 10 points of damage (laughs) does that go through your armor um looking here uh actually the way melee works is it's we did this wrong last time, so we just said ignored armor. It's half your armor rounded up. 
Um, so what's your armor? My, oh, okay. Uh, my body armor is 11. Oh! So, That's pretty nice. half of it rounded up, so it'd be 6. Um, so you still take 4 points of damage from this as it cuts you. It kind of just, like, scrapes your arm. It, like, lunges at you, scrapes your arm. You take 4 points of damage, and you also lose 1 permanent point of damage off of your armor. So you can subtract your armor down to a 10 now. Got it. And that's the way it works in combat. So whenever you take a hit that your armor doesn't soak everything up for, um, it permanently reduces your armor by one. At least you're making Alrighty. a hell of an entrance, says uh, Jozan Brinter. I hope I said that right. Right? Yeah, yeah. You guys are really getting the attention of the the people in Forlorn Hope as you make your first time, uh, your first entrance. There. This is a, a notable bar where you can get jobs. Uh <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you guys have made your entrance. So he lunges at you. What the hell? <laughs> you deserved that. I immediately recognize what was happening. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. Uh, and he, like, waves them in the light at you. And they kind of glisten with your blood on the end. Now, don't make... Don't leave Kronos waiting too long. <laughs> All right, let's go. Mental zero. Yes, that's right. Integrating yourself to the locals there. So you make your way inside, and the music <laughs> is just pounding. There's a stage at one end, uh, and you can see, like, a notable band playing. And you, it's, uh, you know, we'll say Rocker Boys. So you see uh, yeah, Jack Straw and the Diamonds are on the stage, and they're playing. You guys have heard of them. They're actually well, quite well known in Night City. Uh, there's a bar along the, the far wall, uh, and it's just crowded with folks. The music is just pumping. You can't hear each other when you speak to one another and it's just filled with people you're scanning the room and there's folks of like all walks of life you can see you see people who are just like mundane looking everyday people you see you see like even like like a soccer mom sitting there <laughs> in her regular everyday clothes and then you see people decked out in cyberware and you see like like cyber future retro punks and rockers and Net runner is just completely decked out in like the best gear, Drew. You're 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 drooling. You're jealous of the things they have. And you guys make your way in. And people are looking at you, and they're kind of like as you walk by, they step away from you. They give you a wide berth. They're not sure of the group of uh, five of you. Do I see anybody I recognize? I'm a fixer. I know a lot of people. Yeah. Do you? I'm what? just asking. No, no. I was just saying, do you know a lot of people? You're a fixer. Let me grab your fixer. I have all of your sheets here in front of me. Yeah, it says I have a lot of contacts and stuff. I didn't know if anybody else would be partying here. At least that's what I said in the character description. I don't know if I have stats that don't reflect that. Uh, make me a... How about... We'll, we'll put it underneath a local expert. Let's do that. There's local expert or, or human perception. We'll just do local expert. You scan the room and see if you notice anybody. Oh, look at this. A 19! Yeah, yeah, there totally is. You see, uh, you see Johnny Mor Moronic, uh, in the corner. Johnny Moronic, I love it. <laughs> we were talking about Johnny Mnemonic before the stream, so. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's sitting there at the bar, and he's sipping away, and he's looking all nervous like he always does. He's a little jittery, he's a little fidgety, and. Johnny. Johnny's sitting there, he's got a nice, he's got a nice press suit on, but it's like, it's, um, it's, a, it's. It's just like the cheapest quality suit possible. Like this thing is plastic. <laughs> oh, the roll is messed up. Okay, we can see that on the stream. It's, oh, okay. It starts with a minus one. Okay. Well, maybe we'll be well, rolling one details. minus. So it, it came out as a, a negative eight plus seven. But okay, we're gonna leave feedback on the forums after this for the character sheet. So if we want to, we can just set up a quick macro um, d10 and then put in whatever your your base stat is and your bonus yeah. we can do uh, that. I'll, I'll keep i'll keep how things went though because i don't want to disrupt the narrative okay. cool thank you for noticing that so yeah johnny's sitting there johnny moronic he's sitting there and he's he's all like fidgeting he's looking around he's sitting by himself at the bar on a stool he's he's in the corner there's nobody talking to him he's just kind of sipping on drink here and there and yeah i just want to um I just look over to the rest of my friends and say uh i'm gonna see if my buddy knows anything about this Kronos character. We, we don't know much about him, do we? No, you don't. You just got a message through another um, guy who hires okay. hires folks to do jobs. Yeah, so I immediately uh, walk up to the bar, buy an extra drink, 
uh, try to gauge what he's drinking, try to maybe get get a refill for him, and yeah, yeah he's, and he's walk over to him. Mojito. Yeah, I had to bring uh, him. A, <laughs> bring him a mojito. You see that you a see cyber the mojito. Yeah, the distinct uh, mint leaf <laughs> on top. So you uh, you walk up and how do you how do you greet Johnny? Moronic. Johnny, my man. What's up, dude? You come over and he, he jumps a little. He didn't see you right, or uh, notice you right away. And it takes a moment for him to recognize you. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, Vance, how did you, how did you get in here? Uh, uh, they're letting anybody in here now, huh? <laughs> oh, you stuff. know I'm not anybody. Anyway, so, what you looking on edge for, man? This is a party. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Vance? I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly normal. You look a little strange. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I guess that's typical with you anyway, but a uh, quick question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm here to meet a guy named... <clears throat> I'm just kind of lean in. I'm here to meet a guy named Kronos. And he, um, he, he shouts at me. He's like, Kronos? <laughs> no, no. <sighs> come, all right. Is there like a... Uh, come, come to the bathroom with me, man. I got to talk to you about something. Come on. Uh, 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 Nothing uh, weird. Come on. Uh, 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 all right. All right. You bought me a drink? I guess so, fans. Yeah, 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 yeah. You owe hey, me. What's, Come what's, on. what's up? All right. I take him back there like, to where it's a little more quiet. I'm like, all right. Just try and check and see if anybody else is paying attention or eavesdropping or anything. And I lean in. I'm like, yeah, this, this guy, Kronos. I'm here to meet him. Just wondering if you knew him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kronos. Yeah, that's what you said. I heard you out there. Uh, yeah, yeah. He he, he holds court over uh, the far side. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of private booths over there. He's the, he's the third one in. You can buy Kronos in there. What are you what are you doing for Kronos? That's pretty big time, Vance. Yeah, I mean, I'll see how it pans out, and then and then I'll know whether or not I can talk about it. But yeah, uh, you just enjoy that drink, man. Uh, take it easy. I just yeah, kind of yeah. leave the bathroom. Leave him in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, he's just standing there, kind of shrugging and. Look at around. I got the info. Uh, Someone comes out of a stall and he jumps. Uh. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Well, I'll walk, walk back over and let them know uh, which uh, you said booth. Yeah. Yeah. Third, third booth. booth. Yeah. Yeah. I let them know. It's like uh, that idiot Johnny seemed, uh, told me that he's in the third booth. All right. Sounds good. Uh, any uh, any muscle there with him that? It's obvious to see. Uh, no, you you scan the area and no, you see there's the third booth in. And there's a there's a gentleman who looks like he's in his mid to late fifties. He's got a widow's peak, uh, short slicked back, uh, white hair. Uh, he's got like a real like chiseled face, like a like, don't mess with me kind of look on his face. Uh, he's wearing a he's wearing a suit, and he's just sitting there by himself drinking. Looks like he's drinking a, like a scotch or a bourbon or something, some sort of whiskey. And he's just kind of scanning the room. He doesn't have any cybernetics or anything on him. Look around the room. How many, how many, uh, you know, bouncer types do we see? Not that we're looking for trouble, but just to seven. Take a glance. Seven. Okay. I'm just gonna order a drink and then walk over there. Yeah, sure. You order a drink. Just head on over to the table. You stroll stroll on over, and as you approach, he kind of sits back. And, Who's asking? My name's Jerry. I was told to meet Kronos here. Me and my friends. Ah, all right. Everyone here? Yeah. As far yeah. as I know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll, I'll be kind of standing behind his shoulder, kind of backing him up. Give yeah, it, yeah. Smiling, making the, making the situation seem as relaxed as possible with my uh, mannerisms. All right. Well, yeah. um, why no no? Why don't we head head to the back where it's a little bit more quiet? Uh, it's too loud here to talk, and so uh, there's a lot of ears around here. Okay. Lead on. Yeah. yeah he gets up from Drew the finishes. Uh, um, sort of like she probably ordered uh, like some vodka or something to clean the wound and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it on the wound. <laughs> Everybody's yeah, lucky. A little first aid, doing? no big deal. <laughs> yeah, and he uh, he goes to like the, the back to the, the door to the kitchen, and he opens it up. And there's staff milling about, and he guides. He doesn't look at you. He doesn't say anything. He just keeps walking, and he walks past the kitchen staff, and he goes back to a to a little office in the back. He says, "We can we can chat here." 
Oh, and it's like a tiny little room. There's an office in there. There's papers strewn about. It's completely messy. There's a chair behind the desk, and there's like one other chair, and the rest of you have to just kind of stand in this small little tiny office in the back. Uh, any other windows, door? There are no windows whatsoever. Just one door in and out. This is a tiny uh, little Grant, makeshift Grant's office. going to stand by that door. All right. Gotcha. Oh, he sits back in the chair. He puts his feet up on the desk and goes, "Well, you uh, you came very highly recommended to me. So I've got a little bit of a special job. I'm hoping you can you can handle after uh, you know the two of you. He points to Jerry and Kronos. The two of you handle yourselves there at the apartment block. I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, you two were vouched for. The mission is a it's a, it's a hands off job for me." needs to be done, but it must be done by people who can't be tracked back to my employers. This enables them to point the blame elsewhere and avoid any messy ac accusations. After all, everybody knows what a dangerous place Night City can be, huh? And looks over at you, Drew, with the, with the, bloody, the bloody wound on your arm. Just, I give a wink back. Yeah. <laughs> The situation is this. It seems that the government of Colombia is using a large yacht to insert black operation teams into American coastal cities. These teams are helping to establish the receiving ends of drug pipelines from Central and South America and are actively working to hinder the operations of American authorities. We have intelligence that indicates that this ship is at anchor in Night City right now. And I want you to take it out. Now, there's one problem. Well, there's many problems. But the big one is, there's over 30 major yachts anchored out in Pacifica Bay right now. And at least half of them could be our baby. None are registered to Columbia. We've had net runners in and out of Colombian government computers for over two weeks. But near as I can tell, the information we want is not stored in any database. We did get a break recently, though, and the Treat Davis Act 2013 re-established diplomatic relations with the South Americans and gave them embassy rights here in the U.S. It cost us a valuable agent, but we have reason to believe that the information we want is stored in a safe in the office of the Consulate General in Colombia's Night City Consulate. Unfortunately, the consul himself is back in Colombia for two weeks, so we can't wring the name of the ship out of him. That means penetrating the consulate, opening up the safe, finding the correct documents, getting the name of the ship, and then destroying the ship before it flees. Sounds difficult, just like any other job. Well, that's why I went to the group of you. Like I said, this can't be traced back to myself or my employers. No Just paper trail. Expensive. Well, I'm willing to pay you each a thousand euro bucks to complete this job. Each, you, you say. That's nice. 500 each? Yeah, 500 now and 500 when the job is done. Wired straight to your accounts. And what about extra gear we might need? What are you thinking? You, well, don't know the group yet. of you look pretty Probably well equipped. Either. Yeah, but if we need to have uh, acquisitions to something a little bit more beyond our means, what what are we talking here? I could probably get that for us. No big deal. Unless you want them to compensate us afterwards or something. I can get you demolition materials for when you identify the boat no. to take it out. Um, if it's guns, I can get you guns, but this is going to be a pretty low-key operation to get into the consulate. Who's your guy? Freddy? Your my, explosives guy? My guy? Yeah, yeah, your explosives guy. Freddy? Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah, it's Freddy, yeah. Whatever. He's a good guy, man. Yeah, that's right. Freddy four knows fingers. Stuff. He knows the stuff, yeah, four fingers, yeah. Uh, he just kind of <laughs> he just kind of fluffs you off. He says, uh, the consulate is in an office building in the South City District. The building's lobby is supervised day and night by two guards leased from Araska Security. Security on the consulate floor is provided by consular personnel who are assumed to be soldiers. So these men will be trained to take you out on site. It's a seven-story building. The consulate is on the fifth story, the fifth floor. My reconnaissance says 
At any given time, there are five to eight soldiers on the fifth floor on duty at any given time. There's also going to be workers there 24 seven, but be it nighttime, there'll be less than the day shift, but there will be civilians also milling about there. But your biggest enemy is going to be time. The consulate has an account with Araska security and it's hardwired to a local Araska office. That means if an alarm is triggered and signaled, it cannot be intercepted by you and points to Drew. Snipping the line itself will also stand out and alert to the security company. You have three options here, all right? Incapacitate the two lobby guards and everyone in the consulate so the alarm won't be raised. Good luck. Execute the entire operation in under four minutes. That's the projected response time once the alarm is triggered. Or accomplish the operation without alerting anyone. He uh, tosses a, a dossier down on the desk. Let's, here's a map of the building. I have a question. Shoot, Vance. Now that I've heard the terms and the, the various stages of this mission, various possible routes, I'm thinking, uh, thinking a thousand is a bit light. What do you say we up that? Eleven hundred each. Oh, are you? Are you, Vance? Five, five, five fifty now. Five fifty later. That seems fair. I mean, we're risking our lives. You're sitting here having a drink. Why don't you, do you make? Why don't you make me a roll? Try, try and grease him. Uh, do a persuasion roll. You've got a decent persuasion. Uh, so, but this is rolling wrong, is it not? Is that what I understand? Um, I think it's just the, um, uh, I think it's just the interface check. Like, you can, you can hover oh, over Oh, okay, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Just, yeah. Roll 1d8 plus 1. Yeah, because if you, ho if you hover over the, uh, interface check, it, it starts as rolling 1 minus 1d10. One oh, that's and, silly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, yeah, you you do a 13, and he goes, oh, 1,100? He looks at the, the rest of you. Is that enough for the group of you to take on the job each? He's kind of, he's hey. kind of like mocking. <laughs> so uh, Vance and I are, are mic'd up to each other, and, and I yeah. uh, say in Vance's ear, don't forget your driver. <laughs> you guys do have cyber audio, which is amped uh, hearing, or you guys can, yeah, discuss and talk to one another. Personal agents, that's it. Uh, okay. Do we all hear yeah, that's this? including our driver, correct? That is. Does the fixer have one? Our nomad. I have one as well. Cyber audio, right? Yeah, yeah. You have you have a. Well, you have an agent, a pocket-sized machine, which functions as a computer to phone. Right. Mm. We should all have that. Um, but the fixer actually has cyber audio, whereas you have you have like oh, okay. a light built into you, nomad. I notice you have cyber optic low light. You can clearly see in dim light. Ah. I don't know, unless they, they, they're sitting there with the phone on so you can hear it. Speaker phone. <laughs> Speaking of something like that, Matt, I've got my uh, cyber optic camera in my eye, so I'm recording yeah. this whole thing. There you go. Yeah, that is that is fair. So 1100, is that going to do it? Is that uh, is that enough? That sounds fair. I just I just felt 1000 was a little light, you know. That softens it up a bit. Fine, eleven hundred yeah, The risk of international incidents do uh, does uh, concern a lot of people. So yeah, worth a little extra. <laughs> All right, eleven hundred is for Mister Vance Vix over here. Mm -hmm. Well, and my <laughs> friends too, not just me. Yes, all of you, all making of that you. clear. All right, all right, so as I said, you need to get the consulate tonight. He arrives back in the next two days. It's best to do this at night. There's going to be less numbers there. If you trigger the alarm, you have four minutes to get out. That is going to be the response time for the private security agency. You cannot cut the security lines. If you do, it'll trigger the alarm. It'll go off to them. It's hardwired to their local office. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean you can't jack in and mess with the building itself. Gain access to cameras, lights, AC, whatever. You name it. But if you do anything funny, that alarm will go off. I'm sure our clumsy friend over here can help us out with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, right. I heard about that. As long so, as we don't get another one. Your bouncer just, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, <laughs> it doesn't any other... have very good balance here. I guess not. 
That's why I call him a bouncer. He's bouncing around. <laughs> you got any other questions? Yeah. Uh, what's the best drink on the menu? Because I'm looking to have a good time before we go and do this. Unless it's tonight. Is it tonight? It's tonight. It's he tonight. It's That's right now. Need to go. <sighs> All right. Whatever. Yeah, yeah let's go. We can drink when we're done. Yeah. Sounds fair. I just chug what drink I have left and kind of sit it down on his table and smile at him. <laughs> Thanks for the 1100 and just uh, walk out. We'll or start to walk out. He and, says, hey, yeah. if you get the contents of that safe, you come back here and see me and we discuss the next steps. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, yeah, that sounds great. All right. He shouts over the music or over the, the kitchen staff that's back there shouting and <laughs> blasting music of, of their own. Nice. <laughs> Something to drown out this crap, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's see. All right. So you guys head uh, out. You go back to yeah, uh, crash. Get out. Mm -hmm. After we get outside, I'm gonna yeah. be like Vance, dude. Next time, go higher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know this guy. I didn't. I didn't want to get shot on the spot. You know, someone will shoot you if you ask for too much. Uh, we're still working. We got to come back and talk to him anyway. We can always up it if we think we need to. Yeah, he's, yeah, that's he's, true. He's kind of poking fun at you when you ask for eleven hundred. Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it's f twelve thousand then. <laughs> <laughs> A million right. dollars. One million. All right, so you guys yeah. fill in. Um, you fill in crash on what the job yeah. is and where you need to go, yeah. and you need to head to South Night City, which is the opposite end of the city. It's gonna take. Say, so, hey, while Drew, to get there. can you uh, take a look now and maybe see what uh, security looks like? I'm on it. Um, he gave us a dossier with uh, info on like the uh... so the layout of the building. You're too far away to um, to jack in and uh, like actually get into the systems here. And there's there's uh, there's no like um, like Google or anything like that in this because like, well there there is we'll before. say there is I, like these books were written back in the early '90s late '80s but when there was no all such right. thing but everything's like on discs and all that the way this is written but come on now that doesn't <laughs> everything's in the clouds or <laughs> right? yeah definitely all right yeah like I, I just sort of want to do um, a bit of research on the uh, the private sec uh, uh, company that is yeah uh, the Arasaka um private security agency yeah so they're a very notable um security agency and they are um they are employed by um very wealthy um employers so their services don't come cheap and a lot of them are ex-military themselves they're very well trained and they're okay. no nonsense they're like shoot first ask questions later sort of reputation and we know that type yeah yeah you guys have faced that before <laughs> have you not yeah mm -hmm. say so, hey crash how long does it take to get up there I'm assuming he knows uh, to, to drive the town there? real well time-wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. normally I'd say it takes oh, about an hour and a half. Because you're going, like, think about the size of the city, right? Like, the, the space between, the gap between Los Angeles and San Francisco is massive. I don't know if you've ever driven the freeways and stuff out there. So we'll say you normally takes about an hour. Crash, can, you know, taking the uh, back roads and this and that and shortcuts, he shaves it down to about 30 minutes. He can yeah. do it in half. We'll, we'll be there in 30. It's an hour and a half. We'll be there in 30. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Hold on tight. <laughs> it's just like grabbing the handle. Strap in. Did so, crash? That's all you are, had to say. Are we in the vehicle or are we standing outside right now? I'm just... Get in, clock's ticking. Let's all go. Right, man. All right. Yeah, let's... Um... So... I call shotgun so I can control the radio. <laughs> All right. Just make it old school. All right, I peel out and floor it. Yeah, you turn a lot of heads as you do that. And some people, you know, stand there. What an asshole. Uh, <laughs> you peel out. <laughs> well, that's what we like. But you, yeah, you peel out. You guys yeah. definitely make an exit. You made an entrance, and you've also made an exit now. Uh, you're getting a bit of a reputation for yourselves around Forlorn Hope. Um, be it a good or bad one, I don't know. But you guys peel out, uh, and you're making your way to the city. It's, you know, darkness, the lights street lights going over and you just you guys are passing the dossier around you're running down the scenario yeah. and the situation there uh you know that there's right. again there's guards the two guards at the front door it's outlines there are five to eight ex-military on the consulate floor on the fifth floor at any given time you know that it's hardwired to the security office nearby the araska security office um yeah 
Say, Jury, uh, any way you can make any kind of silencer? I should Some of the problem. guns. Maybe, I don't, I don't, we need to talk about how we're going to do this, but that's one option at least. Yeah, I can work on that. Also, uh, well, I'm, I'll be gear everybody stuff. I want to make some, if I don't already have it, some drones that where I can uh, disperse maybe uh, smoke grenades or different things like that. You asked me about this in the last one. I was like, nice. damn it, Oak, there's no drone, there's no rule for drones yet. Why are you doing this to me? Hey, uh, on the fly, man. <laughs> I don't buy them. Okay, then never mind. No, no, no. Well, we're, we're all with no, the, it. The, the job's too expedient. I don't have time to do it. Easy to explain. All right. Yeah, all right. That's, yeah. I don't like to say no. But, so we let Drones the have to be stuff programmed. Into. It takes time. You need the, uh, the components Jury's as well. Good, Let's though. renew your fixer. Oh, yeah. I can get you a drone. Just not today. My, my buddy's on vacation. You can have the drone fly in. That's the whole point, right? I need to make any kind of rolls <laughs> for uh, fixing silencers or anything. Yeah, yeah. You just pull over and get some potatoes and duct tape no i'm just kidding yeah. what, while we're uh while we're, we're on not the, pulling anything over we can do about this stab wound here oh yeah <laughs> anybody want to try and heal that um who or is that a yeah. skill or um i'm not sure what we need to do cure light wounds cure light wounds That's i've got some bait and wire and duct tape sounds here. like a different game <laughs> yeah i'll pass on the duct tape uh, I we might need it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll I'll look that up here um, with the healing. It never came up last time, to be honest. <laughs> um, you were either dead or a uh, first aid. Not. All right, all right. Hit points, wound states, death, and healing. Here we go. Hit points are symbolic uh, measure of how much life you have. Blah blah blah. Healing. All right. There's a difficulty value to perform successful first aid on a target or yourself depends on what state of wound they're in. First aid takes an action, okay. like all other skills, and is rolled tech plus first aid, first aid skill plus a d10. Once successful, first aid has been received and the target will heal a number of hit points equal to their body for each day they spend resting doing only light activity. Well... Uh, yep, so that there's nothing then. No, there's nothing going on there. And nobody has, has um, first aid, I don't think. But... Uh, I think it was Jury who used the cultural appropriation or whatever it was to great effect. What was it? Education, wasn't it? No, there's that makeshift one. What is it called? No, it's something. Remember, you can pull on knowledge yeah, but if you're it's really not well on my educated. List. I don't remember what it's called. No, cultural familiarity. I said appropriation. Cultural familiarity <laughs> is what it's called. Um, you pulled on that last time because remember, you didn't know how to fly a helicopter. Yeah. And that was. Education and intelligence, or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where it's like, hey, stay in school, kids, because it pays off. If you have a high intelligence and you make a role in something that you're unskilled in, you can actually get bonuses based off having a high education in this game, which I think is cool. I think that is a neat rule. That's <laughs> great, but my education is a two, so well, I'm not going. You to nailed it, but um, nice. Like okay, but it'll work. But Drew, but Drew is not like resting. It says like bed rest or taking it easy, nothing strenuous. I'm While they're looking not at bleeding him. all over the car, oh, looking at her. While they're looking at him, I've, I've crashed through a fence. Yes. And dropped us down into a tunnel. Uh, that's like not very well lit. I've got cyber optic low light vision, so I'm uh, hauling ass through a tunnel that's just barely lit. So the rest of you are taking a little short. I crashed. Don't kill us before we get there. Um, make me a basic tech roll there, Jerry, for your silencers. I could have asked that guy for silencers. Yeah, you there's like stuff rolling around in the back seat and components and this and that. And you you put some stuff together to uh, to make some makeshift silencers. It's good for a couple shots before it'll blow off and won't be of any use to you anymore. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that uh, page twenty nine. I did find it. I appreciate. It. I couldn't remember the name, but it's a really cool rule. Um, I appreciate you throwing that in the chat. So is she just is she bleeding out or anything? No, 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 no. Uh, it's only three points. It's only three points of okay. damage. It's or four. I'm sorry, okay. but it's nothing. Once you get down to half your hit points, then you start getting minuses to your rolls. You're not bleeding out or anything. It Got starts you. to take effects to how well you roll. So you guys make it there. Crash is going through the the tunnels, the aqueducts. You guys can't see anything. You're terrified for your life. 
Uh, he gets you there in record time. He gets there in 28 minutes. You guys pull up to uh, to where it's indicated. It's it's located in the Steiner Building, which is in a commercial district. Uh, traffic is fairly heavy, even at this time of night. There's a lot of traffic coming and going. Um, the neighboring buildings, there's the one to the right is six stories. The one to the left is a four-story building. And uh, in the middle is the Steiner Building. And there's a uh, wide tree-lined walkways in between them. Uh, you you kind of pull around, crash, kind of scope out the scene. There's room in the back of this of the Steiner building for private parking. Yeah, I'll park back there. Lock it down. Mm-hmm. There's a few cars parked back there. Not too, too many, being it's, you know, we'll say it's like one in the morning at this point. I grab the shotgun out of the trunk. I say, are we going in heavy? That's a good question. I'll grab my assault okay, rifle out of there. Right Silencer on it. Help the place out a bit before we start blasting it up. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Just me. Yeah, no, that's. Uh, I would. I would prefer to uh, get myself uh, all tangled in here before we uh, go. Yeah, you know, hog wild. That sounds like a good Cyber reconnaissance can do for us first. Yeah. Yeah. So Drew, you can definitely get in here now and you try to hack into the cameras and see if you can get in there and take a look at what's going on for numbers in this building look over to her and i'm like uh yeah i completely forgot you're like the best scout <laughs> <laughs> right the one who doesn't get shot ideally but uh, or stabbed uh, uh yeah as as the night uh goes let's work hope that luck works out <laughs> Yeah, just hide, hide in a phone booth. I'm just kidding, those are probably outdated and don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been when this was written. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Right? Yeah. I wonder if they would have, um, you know, predicted the fall of the phone booth back then. <laughs> I don't know, I'm cracking up because I have an agent, which is a pocket-sized machine, which functions as a computer and a phone. <laughs> also known as... Uh, yeah. A phone. Yeah. So so that is off of the new character sheets. All mm -hmm. of your equipment is from the Cyberpunk Red. So it's the updated stuff. I'm sure if it went into the old 80s, the 2020 stuff, then uh, it would be be very different. You probably wouldn't have a pocket phone, I'm assuming. So it's like an iPhone 4S. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, essentially you've got an iPhone in your pocket. <laughs> My character oh. always wears sunglasses at night on missions. I... Hope so. Why am I not in style. That, he's got he's got low light vision, so it doesn't bother him. <laughs> All right. So you need me to roll an interface here to Yes, please. Let's and see gonna... if this uh this quick fix worked or not. Hey, it did. Awesome. A 12. That, that, that is uh correct. You well, unfortunately that 12 is yeah. not high enough. So you try to hack into the systems <laughs> and you're unable to get through the firewall and the passwords in place. Um yeah. Anyone that can weaken those? Or? You're, you're unable to get through. You didn't roll. I was going to say you set off one, but you didn't. You didn't roll a one. I won't do that mm -hmm. to you. You're just unable to bypass them. All right. Um, now, was that just trying to shut down the systems, or was that just looking at what's going on? I was just trying to get, get in the door there. Like, okay. Okay. Um, so... Are they allowed? Is they allowed to make another attempt, or is he going to have to try a different? Means no, of that? that's kind of it. When you fail a roll, well, hacking is different. It's it is here. I'm going to change the music now that we're outside the Steiner Building. I'll change it up. Hacking is different, um, right? Because you can keep you have levels of hacking. You're not really like okay. in. It's kind of like combat, but not really. So. You can you can keep doing it, but I will I'll tell you this: you can keep attempting, but it will get harder, or you do have the chance of alerting them of their, your presence if you keep failing. How does that sound? Because yeah. the way it's they, they design it in this in this book is it's like they say it's like you're going up an elevator and you're going levels up in a building. So like the first level is like the basic access, the next level will get you this, the next level will get you that, the next level will get you so far. So right now you're just trying to get in the main door. A twelve, unfortunately, is like just just shy of like getting in. And getting access to 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 everything. Can we purchase like a um, like a breaking and entering program type gear thing for him? Well, Drew has some. That's what the deck is. I have Speedy Gonzalez. Right. Right. Um, 
uh, Banhammer and Black for all of my, for my programs, and none of those help. None of those help in this situation, unfortunately. Um, so like the one failure, that's just like a random ping hit this thing. It's not really worried. You do it again, it's gonna say, "Hey, wait a second. Yeah, yeah. You haven't set off any alarms. Nobody's really noticed. You went in there, you tried to hack it, and it's like ah, denied. All right. Uh, first attempt didn't go too well. I want to uh, move and uh, try not to be as uh, sure tra traceable. Um, so it's like I jack back out and uh, like look around for like a different point. Yeah. So, yeah. Or, so oh, the rest of you, sure. The rest of you are sitting back there, and you see that there are there's cameras pointed in the parking lot so there's cameras like trained on your car and every other car in here it's not specifically just you but there are cameras in place out here yeah it's um trying to uh like not necessarily like um have my face or like anything visible um to the cameras is it how visible is like the license plate in the car of our, or on the car i'm gonna say crash <laughs> you like this is what you do you he he would have like parked it in a way that it's not gonna it's not gonna show up or okay yeah you, Cra like, crash uh, you're an expert <laughs> yeah, i can i can change it digitally anyway it, it, yes okay there yeah. we go excellent um Presses a button and it just rolls to another line. Yeah, I, I push a little button on my. Uh, it was like digitized, just agent blurs, and it changes numbers. Nobody has metal license plates anymore in the future. That's ridiculous. It's displays now. Mm -hmm. That's why he uses the old one that, that rotates. Nice. He's avant garde. Oh, the, the, uh, LCDs are cheaper than uh, the aluminum now, anyway. Well, right? I have <laughs> seen any service entrances in the back? Oh, the yeah, yeah, here? definitely. There's there's a few entrances in the back. Service entrances. There's um, what the what the folks who work here, they'll use a, a general entrance for them because this is a, a parking lot for the people who work here. Okay, before All you right. break in again, can you pull up schematics for the building? You have so schematics. You, have, you guys have, you have, you have the plans. You have them all. Yeah, yeah. So you can see exactly what All room right. the it is on the fifth floor that you need to go to and try to find this. You have the full schematics. You know exactly where you need to go. There's it's a stairwell the going up. Sewer stairwells. Pipes. All right. Stairwells at the front and back, and there's an elevator at the front. Uh, there you don't have like sewers. Like you have like it shows you where like the sewer connects to the building. Yeah, yeah. There are sewers, but you don't have like it mapped out for the whole area around you. It's just like what's below the building itself. Mm -hmm. Was this um, safe uh, electronic? So, like, killing the power, not a good option? Um, I imagine killing the power would probably uh, get the, uh, the the private sec. Uh, that yeah, would definitely set off an alarm. Power that would set the alarm. Let's get inside and find Drew a spot to jack in again. Yeah, it's. Um, I'm just concerned about the cameras. If I can uh, get into a point where... Uh, we can actually enter the building without them seeing us. Uh, well, they said there are uh, civilians uh, going in and out anyway, though, right? I think we could probably just walk into the main floor. With all of our weapons? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> the, weapons. the cameras that are watching here, are they all for this building or are they just security for the area? Maybe you can hack into them and they're separate. Systems. They're They're attached to the building. Uh, while you're sitting there kind of deliberating, um, you do see, coming around the corner, you do see a, uh, a Rasek guard rounding the corner. And it looks like he's just kind of like doing the rounds. He hasn't focused in on you, per se. He's walking wearing a suit, a black, a, a black suit, or let's say a gray suit. Uh, he's walking. He's walking okay. and he's he's just kind of looking around. He hasn't gonna, um, made you, the group of you. I'm just going to take out a cigarette and like light it. Uh while we're like waiting around here yeah are you all still sitting yeah. in the car it's cool i was back yeah, at the trunk moving. yeah i put, oh, I put the shotgun back in the trunk and <laughs> and the trunk. yeah it's like i was imagining we were all sitting like sort of outside the van but like <laughs> yeah i was picturing trying us all to be being casual inside. we were getting weapons out of the trunk yeah 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 so he starts around in the corner and he's just kind of looking around and he hasn't like zeroed in on the group of you or anything just yet when you catch a glimpse of him so we what, have noticed him. What's he armed with, him. or radio, or 
Uh, you see Web. that he's got a he's got an implant on his ear, cyber implant on his ear, an audio one, much like who was it? Vance has. I have a yeah, yeah cyber. I have a cyber audio amp hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, so you see that on on his ear. He's wearing sunglasses, we... much like Vance. He's like your stereotypical okay. like. 80s suit, glasses, private security guy walking yeah, around by himself. Like that. Maybe I can pass. We got a guard hidden this way, guys. You think he's got an earpiece? Can you hack it? Yeah, can we jam Probably. that? I don't know if I want to jam it. I do want to know what they're saying, though. Oh, better. Um, look at this, the net runner. Okay. All right, go for it, net runner. And. There we go. Hopefully 13 is better than 12. <laughs> oh, 13. I'm sorry, I didn't notice that it came up with the number. Mm -hmm. Yes, so 13 was my target number before. So you are able to to hack in. You, you hear garble static, and this guy's kind of like talking, and he's, he's like, oh, man, it's nothing out here. We're set up here every night, night after night. They're paying us good money, but there's never anything out here. And you hear a voice on the other end. Yeah, yeah, keep it down. Rodney, we're getting, like you said, we're getting paid good money to so do the rounds. And they're just kind of complaining back and forth. It's like, all right, I'm in. Um, is, is this just the, uh, the radio network, or do I have access to other things as well from this? From this, you're just hacked in now. You'd have to make subsequent rolls, so you're just in, like, their earpieces. You can hear their radio. Yeah, over their VoIP. Yeah. Um, can you, get right, can you uh, shut down those cameras, too? I think shutting them down would be too risky. I, I maybe I can run a loop. Loop them. Um, yeah. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait until uh, Rodney um, moves out of sight of any of the sure. cameras and then make a uh, like a loop. Uh, let me make a roll here for old Roderick. Let's see if Rodney make an awareness roll. And is there any spots that I can tell where there's a blind spot from the camera? Like terrible. Um, My favorite time when you roll terribly. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, so he doesn't notice you. Rodney just is like a planning and he's kind of walks through the parking lot, doesn't notice the group of you in and around the car, and he rounds the corner. Um, you are my what? My tech? That's oh, asking yeah. this? Yes. Jury yes. is, yeah. Uh, make me a perception check. <laughs> oh, ooh, yeah, ooh. you do. Yeah, you do. You can find blind spots all over where the uh, cameras do not intersect. You find four distinct blind spots in the back okay. area here. Okay, I'm like, everybody get ready. Get, jam his ear if you have to if this goes south. And I'm going to walk out away from him, kind of like stumble around like I'm drunk. And I'm going to stumble into one of those blind spots and then make like I'm puking noises. I want to get, basically I want to get his attention and bring him over to the blind spot. Yeah, I'm going to prepare an action to uh, do some amount of like interference. Um, okay, so you're doing this like really loud and audible, right? Like you're not being quiet about it, jury, right? So No, I, I want to be heard. Um... Yeah, and as you're doing that, you can hear his shoes on the pavement coming back, and he rounds the corner. He's got a he's got a pistol drawn, and um, I'll be ready to sprint over there. He he holds it out. What the hell are you doing? Get get the hell out of here! He's got the gun drawn, and he's walking towards you slowly. And he's drawn. He's got it trained on you. Get the hell out of here! Uh, uh, help, million, please! Oh God, my stomach! Uh. Oh my I'm trying God! Getting close is... to me. He gets on the earpiece, goes, yeah, yeah, we got... Yep. Interfering. <laughs> <laughs> Make me a roll. Yeah. Here we go, cyber Popping punk. Popping flippers out and heading over there with Jury. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay, there's something I forgot about, and that is luck. You have luck points in this, and a luck at... For every luck point you spend, it adds a plus one to your roll. Um, luck is equal to... The amount of luck you have in a session is equal to the actual stat luck. Okay. So... You have ten. Ten luck. So you can spend luck on this roll. 
And I, I can't know uh, I can't know your threshold until after I've spent it, or it is a fourteen. Oh, okay, excellent. Yeah, I'll, I'll spend the three. Okay, so you've spent three of your luck. So you interfere. So what he goes, you can see him like put his his one finger towards the earpiece, and he's about to speak. And you, what do you do? Oh, it's um, like I effectively just um, uh. Give a give like feedback through through the uh, through the mic um, on his on his end and like just completely uh, garble sure. anything that's going garble. through. So he's like Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. There's a guy back here. We need we need uh we need a medic. Jerry, call an ambulance. He's like what what? And he's walking. So he gives up on that. And he starts walking closer and closer to you, Jerry. Get the hell out of here, man. What do you want? What do you want? Get out of here. We don't want no as trouble. As, as soon as he gets, like, within striking distance, like, I do a flick of my wrist and my knucks just, like, come out across my cyber arm, <laughs> oh, and I'm going to go at him. All right. Uh, make me a roll. Make me a melee attack. You said... Big knucks. You said melee, you get two attacks, correct? Oh. Yes. One of the men remember better than i do uh yes i believe they do i'm sure the chat will tell us otherwise if i'm wrong but uh i do believe you get two attacks with your melee that's another difference where melee gets an advantage compared to shooting to range uh, okay when i rolled the You're deal beside nux it just gave me damage yeah that's just for damage so you'll have to roll the melee attack skill okay here it is nice damage though so that oh missed. but that's terrible to hit so the first one goes wide the second one connects um his armor so it's ha wait uh, is that six even possible oh um the first uh, melee roll is uh, both of the melee the first melee roll is borked uh it's one minus d10 again Why yeah it's it got that sometimes? one minus one d10 so it should have been re-roll it re-roll it why does it it's it but you rolled the same you push the same button right yeah. Oh, you know what? I bet it calculated that it was a critical failure. I don't know. I was reading the forums, and I'm gonna, I don't, I'm gonna I don't need understand. to look at the code for this because it's interesting. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Interesting. Uh, um, well, the the parentheses is what was rolled, isn't it? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. weird. Reroll it. Reroll the first attack. That's bizarre, man. Okay, so that's a hit. I'm not going to take that first one because I don't understand what happened there. I don't get the code when I hover over it. Um, so it is half of their armor rounded up for damage. So the armor on these guys... Sorry, I bumped the uh, button with the space bar on that five. Uh, Vance just like sort of leaps up out of his seat and is getting ready to run over there. He grabs his cell phone. He wants to record this. <laughs> All right, so they have World eleven. Star. They have yeah, eleven exactly. armor, so it's half. Well, I right, round it up again, so they've got six, just like just like Drew there when uh, that Ripper attack happens. So you rolled a nine damage, so that's three damage, and the five does not do anything. No, no, no. The five was a mess up. It was oh. three and nine, so okay. it would have only been the the so nine three, thing to get. Three damage right. taken. Where do you punch him? Uh, actually, I try punching him in his uh other ear to off try to i don't think they have rules for being off balance or anything like that do they? no but there's rules to do a headshot which is like a minus six to your roll uh, no i wasn't trying to call it's just, it's just a punch <laughs> in the face. you can do a headshot that is a thing uh okay yeah so you land a punch i save headshots for helicopter pilots that's right oh okay. yeah so <laughs> you guys have essentially initiated con uh combat here yeah. just one guy it's quiet just, combat. Just one dude. Uh, but I think we need tokens for this. Yeah, let's use some of this roll 20. Or whatever. So I'm going to take the first image that comes up when I when I search your profession. So Jerry, you're a fixer? No, you're a tech. The first image that comes up for a tech is... You don't have my icon from last time? No, because I'm wearing a different roll 20 here now. So that is... That's my tech. If I had that all from last time, it would be much easier. Tech! 
All right, what's my next one? Uh, Crichton, what are you? You're my... Solo. Solo. I'm going to get a picture of Harrison Big Ford. Gun. There you go. She has a mustache. Oh, no, it's... Yeah. A, that looks a little it's on bit, Solo's but... blaster. This is the first thing that comes up. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tried to mute. Crichton, that's I'm, you. I'm getting rid of this girl's Hitler mustache, because that, that machine gun was making a Hitler mustache. <laughs> uh, Netrunner... The first one on Google Images is cute. <laughs> for net runner, nothing comes up for. To oh, there we go. Tokens. I had to make it two words: net and runner. You gotta be creative with your, if you're looking through those free tokens, man. Yeah, you're you're this whatever that is. Oh wow, nice. <laughs> I don't. So profesh. <laughs> uh, nobody can see it. It's just us. I don't uh, have this up on the stream. Uh, uh, so this is just for our own amusement. Because I didn't ask for tokens beforehand. Uh, yeah. da -da -da, crash. You are my nomad. Nomad. She's yeah, Chevy she nomad is what I now. want. What? Nothing? I get nothing for a nomad? Yeah, that's like the most normal what? word. Try a uh, driver. It is the most normal word. All right, here we go. This is just for initiative tracker. Yeah, that's the only purpose oh. behind this. Because you have to click a token when you when you do it with this character sheet otherwise it don't work there's my nomad and last but not least my fixer <laughs> what <laughs> there's a lot of premium assets but the first one was like what is that that is the first free image for fixer <laughs> uh it's perfect that's me and my um girlfriend there you go i think can't really see. <laughs> okay. You can you can make it big. You now have control of it. I gave all of you control of your your tokens. Thanks, pal. You're welcome. Uh, so I'm go ahead. Steal this uh, nomad picture for another game. It's bad. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually pretty, pretty cool good. Picture. That's the best one up there. <laughs> uh, and I'll do security. So go ahead. Click your token, and once you have your token clicked, you can then hit the initiative button on your character sheet, and it'll roll it for you. Oh, my security one's badass. I don't have a sheet for it, so I'll just make a GM sheet. Generic GM sheet. Um, I clicked on my token here. Yeah. Yes. Do you have to right click? No, you did good. He just hasn't added our turn. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that. Okay. Thank you. No problem. You gotta do it again. You're it, all in there. Okay. I mean, I rolled the 17. Uh, I'm just gonna put. Yeah, put it in there. It's fine. That in there. Go ahead and do that. All right. What's initiative? It should button. be programmed on there for you. It? Way up high, right by uh, top okay, left. Okay, I see it. Sweet. Doesn't seem to work. Yeah, it's fine. Just just put it in yourself then. Okay. Cool. So I'm missing Drew. What was your initiative? Yeah. Uh, that was a 12. 12. And my tech. Oh, there we go. No, it didn't go in. No. Uh, he has a 12. A 12 like. also. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you guys are going to all go before this private security officer. Crichton, you were closing the distance. You said you had your gun yeah. drawn and you are closing the distance. So in combat, you get two actions. You get like a movement action, and then you get one of those actions that I put, put in the basic actions of combat handout within roll 20 is in there. And I think um, Lee also sent it out in the Discord <laughs> for everybody. Yeah, le okay. a less long and skinny version. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, I don't think I even want to fire my assault rifle. I was going to say. I want to move over there to him. <laughs> yeah, so you can close the distance. That's fine. One of my actions will be the move. Yep. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, use my rippers and uh, attack this guy in the chest. Oh, you almost got jump. You got cyber legs with jump boost. Yeah, I can what? jump eight eight yards. Can, can I say man. something out, out, out of turn, just like quick, like a few words? Yes. 
I just want to say, um, let's try and keep this quiet. You're, you're try muted. Keep this what? You're uh, muted and your 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 volume is very low. Very quiet. Is it here? Um, <laughs> you're good. Yeah. Well, I, that's what I'm trying. Yep. Rippers. Uh, here's a melee attack. Is my volume still low? You're good. That's a hit. It is pretty low. Sounds pretty low here. Yeah, it's low. Seven damage. Okay, so that does two points. Because he lost a point of armor. He was okay. down to ten, so that's five. So that's two points right. of damage. And again, 17. Yeah, that's a hit. Come on. No whammy, no whammy. Whoa, right. yeah. Nine damage. How does that sound? Now, what does that, that word is because it's got it highlighted in green? Does that mean something? It means he rolled a six. A six, yeah. Oh, one which, two. Does it explode? No, not from what I remember. The um, criticals were on your to hits, and that's when you get to roll like extra damage or whatever. Yeah, it sounded better. Okay, sorry. Okay, yeah, that's it for me. Um, does he, does the, when well, we got three hits on him, how, how is he looking? He is in, uh, he's in really rough shape. You walked over and you just like slice, slice, and he's bleeding out and he's on the earpiece. Jerry, Jerry being attacked. What do we do with the cameras? <laughs> um, um, the, the cameras are, uh, the we're cameras? in a blind spot. Oh, right? you are in a blind spot. That's right. Uh, I forgot. Yeah. We're, Damn it, you guys. We're not amateurs. Party Wipe Games nice. is raiding us with awesome. a six. We're being raided by Party Wipe Games. Hey, everybody. Nice. Thank you for joining us. We're playing some Cyberpunk Red. Yeah. And we're in some combat. We're beating up a private security agent right now as we try to get our way into a building. So we're oh, in a yeah. blind spot. So, um... Stinking mall cops. Am I right? Cyberpunk! That's right. Cyberpunk Red. <laughs> uh, Crash, you're up next. So you've got your shotgun. Yeah, it was kind of hidden under my coat as I walk into the blind spot. I'll take it out and I'll um, I'll try to bash him in the back of the head with it, with nice. the butt of the shotgun. Sure, yeah, yeah. Close From behind, gap. just trying to knock him out. And Thanks since for the he and I go on the or same crush his skull. Thank since you for the follow the... party wipe. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say since he and I go on the same initiative, I'm just gonna kind of be following him along with my with my phone. I'm recording with one hand, and pistol in the other. <laughs> sure. Now I'll, I'll just go on my action. Oh, there's my action. Next. Okay. Oh, that is definitely a hit crash. I'm filming this for my private collection. See, he rolled, you rolled an 8. That's a nice. Yeah, you rolled an 8 on your D8. So I'm wondering if it's calculating an explosion in here somehow. When you hover over it, it doesn't look like it, but... No, it's not. Uh, wow. Yeah, oh. because because everything else... Uh, and... Any roll should be... Um, like, my melee is a in, six. Like in, in closed in parentheses. So the so, way it works is you roll another d10 and add that onto your result. You've hit him. You don't need to roll another d10. All right, it's right. it's fine. Um, like you 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 have not missed at all. So your damage. I'm gonna say for the the butt of your shotgun, we'll do a d6. D6. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So it's absorbed by his armor. He's like bring it down on him, and his armor just absorbs it uh you can take another swing with your shotgun oh i can yeah because you're, you're using because you're using melee i'll let you i'll let you do two all right break some teeth here yeah nice yeah, that's a hit. look at this 24 24 yeah. <laughs> nice. and roll me another d6 <clears throat> six yeah get that six what? what the... <laughs> oh, again, he just kind of rolls his back towards it and just gets absorbed by the vest. The, the butt of the shotgun is, uh, is, I forgot that I put a little uh, cushion, you know, like a, I put padding on the back of it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the kick was a little too strong. The kick, yeah, the, <laughs> kick kept, been using. the kick kept hit, hitting me in the chest. I was getting annoyed, and so I padded yeah. the end of it. <laughs> but I just remembered. All right, Vance, that means it's your turn. You're I just picture up, this filming. explanation. Go ahead, sorry. You're walking up with your phone filming it, and you got your pistol in the other yeah. hand. You want to pistol whip this guy? 
Uh, then I'm gonna kick him, kick him All in right. the ribs. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna laugh, and then I make sure I get a good POV uh, of uh, of the the rib kick. Uh, all right, I what's just your... go for two kicks. Sure. What'd you What'd you ask? What's your body like? What's the score for body for your character? Uh, six. Okay. What's yours, Crash? Oh, Crash stepped away. Oh, I see him blending in the background there. What's yours, Crash? Crash's body is five. It five? is a five. And I'll throw another brawl check. Two two attempts is just kind of, you know, just wrestling style, just stomping on them, kicking them while they're on the ground. Jagged catheter. Thank you for the follow, and that sounds painful. Uh, that uh, is a very... <laughs> All right, well. Fuck. Absolutely. <laughs> Nightmare terrifying. central. Yeah. What's the worst thing you could think of? Uh, that. All right, so roll me 2d6. 2d6. Uh, that's what I was asking your body. Your brawling actually dictates how much damage you do. Um, ah, okay, yeah, sorry. I, I had that chart. I just I didn't think to look. So, roll me uh, 2d6 for each of those. They both land, you both hit. Roll me 2d6 damage, please. A six and a seven? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah! Freaking cop! <laughs> So he he buckles and passes out uh, with the two um, the two kicks that you give him. I don't know if you stomp him or what you do. Yeah, just, just um, I kick kick him in the ribs with the first toe uh, with like a the with the toe of my boot on the first one, and then stomp his chest with the second one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Stomp his chest. So he passes out. He's bleeding. Passed out. What do you want to do with Rodney? We often him, or what are we doing? Drew, Drew his... can you use uh, something on him to to get into the system? Oh, I probably piece. can. Yeah, I, I yeah, I'm gonna go and uh, try and get his key card or something. Um, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, he he definitely has one. To our uh, Decker. You're well, just doing that. Runner. I, I want to uh, search his pockets. The the old, good old fashioned, you yeah, know, you do. way. Right. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, we'll search the pockets. Maybe we oh. need to drag his eye over to a retinal scanner or something. Jagged Catheter, thank you for the subscription. Nice. Very appreciated. Now that's becoming one of my favorite things. Is you subscribe. A Jagged Catheter? Yeah, yeah. my thank you. <laughs> that's cool. Positive dreams instead. Nice. No more nightmares. <laughs> yeah yeah so he's he's got implants on him he's got like a targeting on his on his eyes implanted he's got the the cyberware in his ears uh he's got like the low light thing that crash has like this guy is decked out um for physical gear he's got his he's got a very big pistol so you can grab that he's got a uh submachine gun flashlight a knife handcuffs and an access key card yeah that's what i was looking for key mm -hmm. card i'm gonna pluck yourself? that i'm gonna pull that key card i'm gonna look over to drew and say uh just hand it over yeah awesome i, I grab it um Bam, is, it, is, it, is it like arfid based or uh what's um what it, sorry what was the question is it arfid based or is it like uh just like I'm asking, like, sort of how it's tracked um, in the system. That is a good question. Um, like, how the card is tracked? Like, its usage and stuff? Mm -hmm. Um, I'll just give it to you. You can, like, like go over it with your deck, and you can tell. It's just, it's not tracked at all, its usage and where it's used. Oh, excellent. Okay. Grab, um, grab them cuffs, Vance. What kind of pistol was that? A very heavy. Very heavy. Mm -hmm. Anyone else want that? Uh, yeah, I'll take it. Unless you need it. I was no, gonna. Go ahead. I was but, gonna take it so I could look flashy and dual wield pistols. But if you want it to actually no, no, no. just have a pistol, then. That's cool. Oh, uh, the ahead. solo has a lot of guns. <laughs> yeah. This isn't right. the first guard we're gonna put down. Yeah, the the solo is decked out. Yeah. 
Um, well, there's also a knife. So a knife wheel. does 1d6 damage if anybody's taking that, and the very large pistol does 3d6. No, 4d6, isn't it? I'll take the knife, there's too. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, 4. 4d6. Yeah. Grab a knife, grab the pistol, you can program on your character sheets. 1d6, you said? Yes. Is this guard still alive? He is alive. Yeah. Let's. We probably have that. Let's just cuff him here and cuff him and gag him and shove him under a car. Yeah. Perfect. Probably the best. Um, yeah, let's do it. We gotta I'm get gonna. Him. I'm gonna log in as him and clock out. Oh. Have him. Uh, have him uh, look look like he quit. Okay, make me an interface roll. Um, yeah. I like that. I like that too. Um, <laughs> all right, you need. Let's roll high. Roll high. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. The interface rolls so far have been like 12s and 13s. Yeah, it's been yeah. borderline. I mean, like Steve last game, our net runner was like getting like what, 20s and 23s oh, and 24s. Killing like, it. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, 14. Not nice. bad. Um, We're going up. In the right direction. Can you, can you send an email from his account? Uh, Does he have a corp account? He does. Mental Zero, thank you nice. for the follow. Appreciate all of his follows and subscribers and everything. It's awesome. awesome. Yeah, he's got he's got a corporate email. It's 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 uh, Rodney R at uh, ArrakisSecurity.net. Yeah, no, I'm I'm just going to. Uh, uh, that was some serious uh, GM skills there, Matt. Yeah, th <laughs> thanks, I thanks like Nick. <laughs> I try. I had to flex those GM muscles. Oh. <laughs> are these camera dead zones leading towards the building or no yeah, just yeah, towards the it, random with, with the role that jerry got hell yeah yeah what would you get like a 21 mm -hmm. or something uh, yeah because Crichton's looking to move we ready or what do we got going on here um who's doing the check right now yeah I'm, I'm i was getting uh rodney off of the uh the system so that people don't uh go come looking for him sounds good but um, it's like I, I figured, like he was acting like this job was boring anyway. So yeah, so he was complaining. That's a good point. He was complaining about it when he was making the rounds and all that. So you you just logged an email company email saying like I quit. I'm done. Mm -hmm. The money's nice. great, but I can't I can't keep doing this. Now did we or did we stash his body under a car? Under mm -hmm. a, they they under cuffed and gagged him and put him no, under a car. That needs to be in one of our vehicles or something because he's got lots of cyberware I can take out. <laughs> oh, he's gonna That's strip the me. cyberware out of him Craig's to sell. In his track. Or, we can't. Uh, we can't get to the. We can't get to our car because of the cameras. Though the cameras. Mm -hmm. yeah. Will it kill him if we just rip it off his head? Uh, probably. He start to bleed. You can attempt to. Yeah, we'll, we'll get him on the way back. <laughs> Got to recycle. Terrible. <laughs> Poor guy. Hey, this is the grim future, right? Hey, my first suggestion was to shoot him. So I mean, we're yeah, yeah. okay. All right. So you guys have a key card. You've got a back door. You've got a blind spot. Going in. It, it sounds like a good path to me. Yeah. You yeah. Put yeah. the card right. down. <laughs> Beep. You hear the lock. They make neck lock. Give and. Swing the door open, and you're standing uh, at a hallway at the back of this building. Uh, it leads straight in. Uh, to your right is a stairwell leading up. You do notice as you step in, though, like into the doorway, there's a, a security camera right above you. And it's trained looking to see people like walking past it as they enter the building. So you're under it. You haven't walked into it just yet. Um, and it's right above you. So if you walk any further down the hallway, uh, you would be on camera. Alright. Look to Drew. Uh, yeah, c uh, can I control? Um, and, uh, like, just sort of, like, You can have... try to, because you haven't hacked into the cameras yet. Alright, yeah. Right? So, you can try um, now, though, hopefully. You can, uh... you can try now. Also want to look at the schematics. Where's, like, a, a maintenance locker yeah. or access to stuff? Stairwell or, yeah. So you're next to a stairwell now. Uh, maintenance locker, like you're looking for where they would keep maintenance supplies? Well, either that or for running the electric and HVAC and stuff for the buildings where they may be able to get access through shafts or something. The HVAC. Yeah, that would be at the rear of the building here. There's like a mechanical room where they would have a lot of that stuff housed. 
gonna roll here. Give me interface. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. There it is. Finally. Oh. We've been waiting for that. Oh, so, so we It rolled 2D. So this is your own macro that you created, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. assuming. Okay. Because I'm like, this looks correct. This looks right. Yeah. Finally, you're net running instead of net walking. I see what you did there. Okay, 27. You're in. You're jacked in. You now have Flint. access to Hell the cameras. Yeah. And you can see, you can flip from camera to camera every floor of this building, all seven floors. <laughs> so you're looking at this one right above Fantastic. them right now. So you see it. It's trained down the hallway to track and look at whoever's entering the building as they walk in. Um, it does not see any of you right now. Uh, now, is it a control to just sort of like take a sample of like a 20 second loop and uh, like make sure that there's nothing ob obvious going on um, to like indicate that there is uh, a loop going on? Hmm, that is a great question. That is a good question. So you want to create a loop if you can, right? Yeah. It's like take some old footage like I, I would i would honestly just like take a sample um over 15 20 seconds and um just run it back but i don't know if um yeah you, that... have, you have full control of every camera in this building right now um Perfect. so i would i would i would say this would have to be another roll though because you're looking to do a loop on them you have them under your control you can look at either one of them you can look at any of them you can move them um but you want to create a loop on them right that's yeah that's I, I don't want to give away the fact that um mm -hmm. like they're being touched yeah uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna rule that we this is gonna take another roll mm -hmm. on top of the the control so you can make me another interface roll uh it's gonna be difficulty 15. Woo! 15 let's you, okay let's see top that 27. i'm i'm that's a that's a crit fail oh my god so you ref did it take into account did it roll another d10 and subtract it didn't no. it went to that d8 ah this sheet what is, is this system? killing me <laughs> so you have to roll another d10 and subtract it from your total got it why is it doing the d8 i don't get the it the way that this person programmed it i don't know what is right. it supposed to be? It's everything is a D10 in this game. Everything is a D10 except for like when you're doing damage, it's like D6s and such. But every so skill check should be a D10, plus your base stat, plus your skill. That is a four. Okay. You are scanning back and forth the cameras. You're trying to set up a loop, and while you're doing that, you notice control has been. Someone notices, like, the camera tries to go one way, and you're controlling the other way. And uh, this, this, shit. yeah, this tells you that someone knows that these cameras are now being controlled. This would have set off something. Uh, like, I am going to cloak, then. Okay. Um, and just try and, like... Well, you're on the, you're on the headset, also, you're on the earpieces, aren't you? Yep. Yeah, you hear like, hey, there's something up with the camera at the back of the building. Go check it out. It's not responding. So there there's are... There's people coming. Yeah, they're dispatching people your way. Um, Very well. Uh, I would imagine so. Uh, do, do I see people uh, on the move through the cameras? You do. You see um, You see three guards, Araska security, coming from the front of the building down hallways intertwined like weaving down hallways and this and that and they're walking and you can hear on the radios yeah yeah we're going to check it out what do you see what'd you get they're like nothing yet there's nothing on the camera but it's uh it's hallway, not responding stairwell so you know as soon as you step you gotta move out you're gonna be seen and you're gonna be seen if you want to go into the stairwell it will anything be anything i do right now is going to be uh detected by um by some people uh or by somebody in the camera booth right now so um how far up is the camera oh it's uh seven physically. feet up how much seven feet off the ground i'm just gonna reach up there yeah push somebody up and, and push it up towards up. the ceiling yeah sure you don't need and to make a roll let's go that. let's go up there and you just push it up to the ceiling you can hear on the radio what the hell it's a it's it's been redirected it's pointing up the ceiling there's someone there get over there fast fast and then psh, they, they know we're here now. Um, you hear the alarm like, go uh, off. Uh, the, sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. There's something going on. 
So you hear the minutes. familiar sound of a cocking heavy pistol. <laughs> <laughs> the four minute alarm has been sounded. Yeah, I, I just I just minutes. run uh, like a a counter on everybody's um, uh, phones as soon as that goes off. Stairwell. Right. Okay, Dex said we have four minutes once the alarm goes off, right? Yep. Yes. Okay, we gotta move before backup arrives. Get your watches. A lot go. of backup. Okay, so we're all going to basically just be trucking it. Uh, what's, uh, I guess, marching order? <laughs> trucking it, trucking order? I'm assuming Creighton's up front? Yeah, Solo's up front, yeah. The Solo is there. Yeah, this Creighton's assault up. rifle, just like, get behind me. I'll, cont- I'll take up the rear, um, keep an eye behind me, keep my head on a swivel, if you will. Okay, so I got the Solo in the front and the Fixer in the back. As many bodies between me and the shooter. <laughs> so, then, so then Drew is second last? Yeah, uh, so probably not second last. You'd probably try to be in the middle. Okay, mm-hmm. Drew's in the middle. Then that leaves... Um, Crash is second last. Okay, Crash. And so that means Jury, you're right up there with Solo. You're known for shooting helicopter pilots in the head. Yeah. Let's go, let's that's go. Right. The jump, yeah, that, the jump start guide going. is available on RPG. And that's what we're using tonight, the jump start guide for Cyberpunk Red. And if you're interested in buying it, we have an affiliate link down below. And use that link. Use that link to buy Cyberpunk Red. And we're also running a mission out of the old Forlorn Hope book, which is also like available that, on there. I like that guy's haircut. Oh, it's so old school, isn't it? This is a print-on-demand copy, but that is so 80s, early 90s. Lost the boys. art and everything. I love it. Half okay, off. so you you are making you're booking it upstairs, right? Is that yes. that's correct? Fifth floor. Yeah, so right up to the fifth floor. You're running, and you can hear uh, chatter on the radios, Drew. Um, yeah. yeah, like at this point, like they know I'm in the system. Um, yeah. I'm just going to like uh, start moving all of the cameras haywire, uh, so oh. that they have no clue where we are. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, they're just like. Up and down, all around, towards mm-hmm. ceilings, whatever. Okay, yeah, totally. You have control of that 27 or whatever this thing you rolled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're pointing all the cameras away. <laughs> Pardon me? I was just going to say, my character would just immediately say, it's nothing useful, sorry. Just go ahead. Okay. <laughs> you guys are <laughs> on the stairs, uh, and you can hear over the headsets, Drew, like, we don't know where they're going. The cameras are haywire. What do you guys see? You can hear, we, we got to the back. The door's open. Uh, we don't see anything. The signs of there's blood. There's blood out here in the parking lot. What the hell happened? And uh, they're panicked. Get extra backup. Get extra backup out here now. So you guys are running your way up the stairwell, and you get to the fifth floor, and you get you get there. You get to the door, and it's got one of those like little thin windows that you can look through. And you look through the window, and it's the floor of the consulate. There's just like a wall with a door saying Colombian consulate. And um, there's the flag on the wall there. How and... far is the room that we need to go to from here? Well, there's just one door. Yeah, the door in from here, the room you need to go into is roughly... So you got to walk through the front entrance. Once you get to the front entrance, then there's like uh, a staging or waiting area with a, a secretary's desk. Um, from there, there's like cubicles and desks. There are workers that work here. And it's at the like the back, the rear of this floor is where the counselor's office would be. So you need to make your way through the actual floor itself to get there, to get to his office. So you look, you look through like the window and you see you get into you see um you see there's a guard there. One of these you one of the ones you're warned about, the ex-soldiers. Well, it's a single one standing there. Was there any kind of ducting we could get in? Any sort of what? Somebody could? You can get in them, sorry? Was there any kind of like air duct? You know, where everybody's crawling through the air vent shafts and stuff in the movies? So, to get into this floor, yes. But the the room that the the count the consulate's uh counselor's office is there's no windows and there's one door and one door out it's very well protected right but but the air shafts the air shaft would room. connect yeah the air shaft would connect if we're in a room with it has one somebody boost me up in there you're in the stairwell so you're not there's no air shaft here we need to find a room this is complete concrete fireproof place okay. to go for safety we need to find a room somewhere on the same level yeah. so we can just want to kick the room. door open and shoot this guard or what do you want to do? no um 
Yeah, that's what I want to do, but uh, I'm going to zap his radio. Why don't we the next floor up? We could open the door, grapple him, and drag him back in if someone's Ooh. strong enough for that. So go out there and grapple him. Jerry's will sing. Let's go to the next floor up. Let's go to the sixth floor. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and uh, zap uh, the guard's radio so that he can't um, uh, call anybody. Okay, and this guy is not Araska security. This oh, is I'm a sorry. private. Oh, this is a private security. You're warned that it was ex-military on this floor, like Colombian ex-military. Okay, so he's not. He is working not with... private security for okay. Araska security. He's services. not a grunt. Yes, he is probably Colombian military. Is what you were warned at the briefing. Um, grappling like, him. I'm assuming he's running a, a, a on a completely different system. Then. Yes, you could. Can that it... is a safe assumption. I will not yeah. make you roll for that. Can I run a? Uh, can I run on two nets at once, or is that? Uh... Uh, you'd, I'd say you have to disable radio communication or like frequency monitoring on the other one to, to do this one. Mm. Well, if they're not communic or if they're not on the same network, um, just what, what's your call here? Um, I can... I can hack into Michael. these guys, but I or no, I'm 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 asking the group. I can hack into um, the uh, Colombian military, but I lose um, surveillance on the uh, private sec. Maybe we can eavesdrop a bit, see if it's worth staying you know, on the we line. We don't have time and for this. Come back if we did. I was gonna say the four minutes is we're counting we're down. As a reminder, right, four we're minutes. On four is minutes, and I cock my shotgun. I kick the door in and go blazing. All right, let's go. All right, shoot. Well, I guess that's what we're doing. It's five d six damage, is it not, on your shoddy? Yep. These guys are not as heavily armored. Uh, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you He's what. Trying to be a little, little stealthy, but I guess that's. Oh, I prefer <laughs> stealthy too. But it's like we're we're on a time limit and it's running quick, and they got bad yeah, guys. Is there a way I can uh, run the audio on every camera um, as well, simultaneously? Oh, like silence it of oh. the shotgun. You'd have to do another roll for that. Because right. you want to mute them, right? Uh, no, I, I, I want I want to, uh, like, they're going to hear the shotgun anyway. I'm yeah. Trying to make we got silences going, going on sure everything. That, um, on a shotgun? <laughs> <laughs> two potatoes. Two potatoes. <laughs> it's like No Country for Old Men, one of those huge tubes that... Like, they actually um, made one on the show once, so. But anyway. mm -hmm. So you do have control of the cameras. What? what are you asking to do with the cameras? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm trying to just uh, make it so that the shotgun sounds like it's coming through every camera at the same time. That's perfect. Um, I like that yeah, that's going to require a roll. Because that's not like controlling them. You're you're trying to loop the audio. Yeah. And feed just, it through just all of the them once. simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. Just the once. Yeah, make all me right. a roll. Ah, oh, mother. That's another... Uh, no. Is it? Oh yeah. my god! Uh, it picks up the audio of where you are all standing, talking, and the, and the shotgun. So instead of like looping on all of them, it, it 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 broadcasts from the one nearest you. So they Here know that you're firing a gun on the fifth floor from the stairwell. Yeah, they were gonna do that anyway. Uh, we know exactly where they are. Uh, so jury, I'm, I was gonna call yeah, you judge. Yeah, I'm following judge, jury. jury. Just lighten them up. Jury, make me a roll. Yeah. yeah, that's a hit, man. All right, roll me your 5d6. A hit, man. <laughs> da. Oh, wow. Okay, so Dang they it, have... Those was a one. I know, I know. They have 10 armor, so they now have nine. So that means they take four points of damage. Okay. What's the range on these guys from where we are to this one security guard? Oh, it's just like... Couple, couple ten, yards. ten feet, like it's yeah, okay. it's nothing. Yeah, a couple yards, it's yards in this, okay. but it's nothing. It's it's nothing okay. of a gap. Like you open the, he swings the door open, and he just steps in and shoots him. Um, what else do you guys want to do? This is like a surprise round. Uh, you guys are trying to do firing well, guns. Yeah, I'm, I want to uh, light him up with a three round burst. Yeah, yeah there we way. go. Let's use those rules again. Okay, so let's see, marksmanship. <laughs> this is what this is what. Assault rifles are made for. Yeah, we're having fun. All right, 22. Uh, at this range, I have a 15. That's what it's calling out the target number is, unless there's something different. Nope, that's correct. So up to three, 
one extra damage up to the maximum of three. Um, assault rifle, here's damage. Oh, uh, that's terrible. That's disappointing. Come on, how can that be? Look at all those ones. I rolled four ones. Yeah. Oh. What's the bonus here, though? For every point above the um, roll one extra damage roll. So I get to have three more sixes, I should, correct? Right. Roll me three more. Yes, that's right. All right. It's the beauty of the three round burst. All right, well, at least so 19 that's total. 19 total, yep. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a nice weapon. So you unload three numbers. Yeah. <laughs> and they just slam into a boom, boom, boom into his midsection. Uh, who else wants to make an attack against this guy? He's still alive. He's bleeding everywhere, but he's still alive. Um, yeah, I'll definitely um, kind of go for the same thing. Uh, well, I have my pistol out, so I'll just take a, I'll just take a single fire, a single shot with my pistol. Uh, Seventeen. I'm not really sure what the target number is. I guess it's versus a number that's a, that you that's have. That's a hit. That's a hit. Okay. This isn't a roll under mechanic, is it? I, I don't. No, I'm, no, 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 no. Okay. You want to go? You want to go over the target number? Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. And that's three d six. Take that, punk! Heavy pistol times two. Twelve damage. Nice. Oh, it's times two because I have two in case I want to dual wield. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I'll um, race the times two. <laughs> <laughs> Looks cool though. Yeah. He drops. He drops. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go snap a pick. And then uh, slide my phone into my into my pocket. I'm moving forward. Yeah, the direction we need to go. Gun ready. Anyone's in the way is getting shot. Yes, yeah, I'm I'm reaching down quickly if he's got any kind of access card on him. Oh yeah, he totally does. He does. And what kind of weapon was he holding? He was holding. That is a great question. A heavy pistol. Well, we have any kind of inkling that this is going to be some hand scan or some. Uh, Irish scan or uh, not according to the to the okay. um, the intel you were given. Okay. Simple and enough. Oh, ass. Yeah, I'm moving Keep forward. Moving. Yeah, jumping over you know desks and. <laughs> yeah, so you make your way into the next room, and this is like yeah. the staging area, the greeting area. There's a desk there where a secretary would sit, and there's like a little waiting area. Um, there's nobody in here right now, but you can hear voices coming from just beyond this area. This That's like the cubicle, the office area. You can hear screaming, um, presumably from the, the workers who are here, and uh, people panicking and screaming, and you can hear hustling. You hear guns being cocked and... In front yelling, of us. Get down, get down! In the next area okay. beyond this, like where the okay. cubicles are. So you make your way up there. Do you want to like stealth or anything? You kind of scope it out, get a lay of the land... Kind of dart between cubicle know. to cubicle, or you just no, want to charge? No, we don't have tons of blazing. I don't think so either. Yeah, I'll glance right. around. If no one says anything. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark uh, where everybody is, um, like, uh, or where all of the like guards are to everybody, and like uh, just over our comms. Uh, okay, nice. So it's like they're they're not gonna attack you uh, unaware at least. So be aware. There's an elevator now behind you and a stairwell behind you, and they know that you're here as well. So it's the Araska security who are on site. You have four minutes before the cal cavalry arrives. Uh, go ahead and just roll me initiative. Vance, you did that. Thank you. All right. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. I didn't ask for it. He just did it. He saw the tracker go up, and he just did it. He <laughs> yeah, knows. Sorry. He knows. I'm just plugging it in here for all of you. It's just quicker and easier as you roll it. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. I'd like to think I've got I've gotten a good in, uh, good sense of when initiative's about Oops. to be called <laughs> over these years. Well, we're gonna we're gonna do this kind of cinematically. We're not gonna I'm not gonna make you do every round because you guys are running and gunning. So we're not gonna sit yeah. here and do round after round. We're gonna go cinematic. Uh, crash. What do we got for yours? He's in. I, I plugged yours in there accidentally. 
right and for your initiative can you just roll me initiative oh okay oh i was uh 15. oh 15 okay all right and i will roll initiative for my people whammy whammy i thought we were your people <laughs> <laughs> my npcs God, come on, 14. all right so you guys are making your way through you're charging through the uh through the offices where the office staff works and you're bobbing up and looking over and around cubicles and um there's people screaming and fleeing and then you come across one desk and there's a, a guy huddled underneath there and he's he's crying and he's he's shaking and and uh that's when you notice my tech who's my tech that's me tech all right jury you notice you see a you see a guard coming your way hey there they are and he's got his uh, heavy pistol drawn and he's heading your way unload on him squelch the radio um I thought, uh, or sorry, we're on initiative here. Yeah. So what go ahead and read me your, your range attack. Yeah, what range? How far away is he? Oh, good question. Um, I keep forgetting the difficulty is based off of the range. Range, yeah. So you've got, what are you using for your weapon? Shot. That's what I'm going to, is he, is it feasible to use shotgun at the stranger? I need to use pistol. I can use a shotgun. I'll give you a 15. You're close. Boom! Is that a crit? Well, I guess oh, it doesn't matter. It. I rolled it. That's oh, damage. Game. All right. So roll me your to hit. <laughs> damn it. I wasted it. That's a hit. That's it. And then all them ones show up. Still. Yeah. 16 points. Okay. Yeah, you fire your shotgun into him, and his armor eats a good chunk of it, uh, and he kind of falls backwards, and he shouted, they're here, they're here. Crash, and I'm going to keep see. moving the direction we need to move. Sure. Yeah, I'm so you just keep going. Either. You you know exactly where you're going. You guys have the layout. You have the map. Crash, you see him fall over and he's shouting, oh, they're over here, they're over here. And he's bleeding, but he's not dead. And then you see you see Jury just keep charging by. Do you want to shoot him or hit him or just keep keep on going? No, I'll just keep, I'll run past him. Keep sure. going. Yeah, you just go him. around him. You go around some some cubicles uh it's his turn he's gonna get up and he's going to he's got three of you looking right at him i know he's got the the guy who just shot him actually yeah he's gonna try and shoot you jury <laughs> you shot him he's not too happy to get past uh it's just cubicles it's like a big a big room full of cubicles you barn 17 hits you. Ah. Come on. Constance was so sad she couldn't play. She just dyed her hair magenta yesterday. So really? She was like already cyberpunked out and everything. Oh, God. Ready to go. Six <laughs> damage. Does that do like anything to jury? Does that even get through your armor? I've got 11 on body and head. All right. So, so you no, absorb six. it. All right. But you lose a point of armor. Or no, does that only go through? It only goes through. Um, I'll take a look at that. So, with that, another one rounds the corner. So, as you guys are going in and around the offices, one comes from the direction of the, the counselor's office. And he sees you, uh, and, but he doesn't have a chance to open fire. So, you have two guards. One who's kind of, like, injured with a shotgun blast, and another one who's coming, who's over by the counselor's office where you're headed. Oh, you only, you so only reduce your armor by one if you take damage. Uh, so that's it for my guys' rounds. Uh, Crichton, you're up. So you've got right. uh, the shotgun guy between you and uh, the other two. And then you see another guy further up, farther away in this office building towards where you're headed. Uh, the one that's injured, the closest one, that's yep. where I'm going. All right. Three round, three round burst. Yeah, you're going to shoot a rocket launcher at him. I'm hoping. 21. Blackjack. So that'll give me a roll plus three more sixes. Here's that. Wow, it's terrible. Those ones. Yeah. Them ones. And added to that. 21 damage. All right. Um, so this is the one who was hit by the shotgun blast? Yes. Yeah, so three round bursts. You just unload on this guy and you rip him apart and he's he's done. He's lying there in a bloody mess. There's blood sprayed everywhere, all over the walls, all over the cubicles. You shred it up like computers and desks and 
the the cheap fabric cubicle walls there's even more screaming now and people flee as someone screams and runs past you and pushes you aside and heads towards the elevators all right i keep moving forward you keep moving forward all right drew it is your turn so there's a dead guard um near you and you also see a guard or ex-military colombian military down further away from where you're where you are but in the direction you're headed I'm gonna try and uh, just duck out of the way and uh, jack in. Um, sure. And uh, dive into a cubicle. Yeah. Sure. Then um, I'm gonna run Pathfinder to try and find um, where the systems uh, or where the building's fire system is. Okay. The fire suppression. Yeah. All right. Come on. Let's see where we're going with this. Uh, yeah. Oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're in. You're you you're hacked into the fire suppression um, system of this building. All seven floors. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm gonna control it. Um, just like, um, call the fire department. Try and get as much interference. Uh, with the response as possible. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So you send out a nine, you initiate the call, like an automated mm -hmm. system that goes off when the fire alarms go off. So you're doing this without sending them off, right? You're not turning on the spring. Oh, no, I'm you're just them. initiating the, the call. I'm, I'm tripping them. I'm trying to cause as much chaos as possible. Yes. Okay. I like it. I like it. Yeah. So you, 911, like all of them, all every first responder is now getting a call to come to this building right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, cool. the sprinklers, I'm imagining, go off. I have one more action. If, um, if you want them to go off, yeah. The sprinklers will go off on every floor if you want. Mm -hmm. And then my last action, I'm going to try to um, control the elevator as well, if, if I can. And uh, make sure that it's locked. Which, actually, no, the fire system would, uh, would block it, wouldn't it? Uh, what are you doing? I'm sorry. Uh, I was trying to um, block the elevator from being used, but wouldn't the fire system uh, being tripped already cause that? Yes. Yes, right. you are correct. Okay. So the elevators are locked down, but the stairwell is still fair game. Mm -hmm. Cyberpunk Red. Yeah, Cyberpunk Red. So it's in like, it's in like, it's just the jumpstart kick kit right now catheter jagged catheter um so it's like very general rules that are available right now when we're using those to play through this so there's going to be like a full core book core rule book available next year from what i understand and we're using just the the the, the, the little rules that are out there there's enough to play games with. oh yeah That's um awesome. but i want more Give me more. Give me more net running options. Give me more weapons. Give me more NPCs. Give drones. me more stats. Drones. Yeah, drones. give us the drones. rules for drones. <laughs> give us more. Not at all. Helicopters. Uh, yeah. Everything. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I'm really liking it. Uh, okay. That was awesome. Vance, bringing up the rear. All right. Um. How? How? Okay. Um. So there you, are a number of other guards, right? Not right the, now. There's one right, dead one, and one. there's one dead ahead. But you're using a pistol, and I'm going to say it's going to be a difficulty. Of you have to roll 20 or higher to hit him from where you're at. Okay. That's uh, even I moving up, like, part way towards him. Could I could I quickly pull my SMG out and just do some suppressive yes. fire down the hallway? Yes. Try and make him take cover somewhere? That, okay. Nice. That, that is an option in combat. Yeah. We used okay, that so last time to great effect. Yeah, it's Yeah, it's cool. good. All right, so it's a will plus concentration plus a d10, uh, and I make an attack, so let's see. When you guys were going down the hallway. Nice. So, do, 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 do. So I'm just going to, since we're all running in sort of, sort of this amorphous group, I'm going to kind of, like, take the lead real quick before letting letting a bunch of bullets down the hallway. I don't want to shoot my friends in the back. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm just trying to find that skill. Will that you, uh, will plus concentration plus a D10, so you might have yeah. to program it. Oh, for them. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, it's otherwise, just like a concentration check, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, within 25 meters, otherwise they take cover. So. Yeah. If they're not already taking cover. 
which yeah. I assume they weren't based on just dead ahead description. Okay, bear with me here. No problem. That's a cool rule. Your like success. It. So he right. dives. You start unloading your like SMG in his direction, and he <laughs> dives down into a desk to take oh, cover. Nice. Perfect. All so right. that takes us back to jury. Jury, you can close the gap between you and him now. He's hiding in a desk with the suppressing fire coming from behind you. You look back. Vance kind of like flashes like thumbs up <laughs> or something to you. Yeah. Now we're going to have to pass him. There's no diverting yes, around him. Yes, you're going to have to pass him to get to where you want to go. He came from the direction of that office that you were headed. Okay. Then as I'm running by, I cock the shotgun, get it ready. And as I reach that cubicle, I just point my shotgun off to the side as I'm running and unload. Hope it hits him. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a really low difficulty for you to hit. Because he's cowering. Um, so go ahead and roll. It's a hit. Nice. Only five D six damage. Woo I must nice. say I am not getting tired of this music. <laughs> are you are you, be, are you being sarcastic? So I could change it. No, I'm really digging uh, it. I like oh, I like no. cyberpunk it. paper yeah. wave stuff. All right. Yeah. Who's in the helicopter this episode? Nobody this episode, fun. We're not uh, there yet. I know. We could have, they could have airlifted in. My helicopter, was, man. You could, yeah, you could have airlifted in. You didn't ask him. That's what I, I wrote earlier. It would have been really cool <laughs> to repel, repel onto the roof, but. <laughs> I will tell you this, though. Did that is like. Stuff back? It does say in the way it's written, like, that'll get the most attention. All of a sudden, a helicopter landing on the roof and repelling. Yeah. They're like, what the hell is yeah. going on up Freaking there? On. Yeah. Get back up. Um. Okay, yeah, so you unload cool, your shotgun. Though. He's still alive. He's cowering there, and he's bleeding, though. Oh, oh, he's bleeding, and he's withering. And you pass him, and you make your way to the door of the consulate office, and you're in. Inside, there's a big desk in the middle of the room. There's, like, no windows anywhere. There's bookshelves. There's chairs for visitors to sit in when they're they're meeting with him. There's a big Colombian flag on the wall. Uh, I'm going to jump to Crash. Crash, you're up. You're right. right behind Jury. You were just running last time. You see that the, yeah. the soldier cowering in that cubicle and bleeding. I have a question. I got an idea. It's just so crazy it just might work. Okay. Do When we were looking at the schematics for the um, building, do I remember correctly that the, that the uh, parking uh, garage spirals up all the way to the roof? The parking garage spirals the up park, to the roof. The, the, the parking spirals up and you can park on the roof. I'll tell you what. Roll me D100. High or low? You call it. Uh, let's go high. No, it doesn't. No, it stops at the ground floor, unfortunately. But your car is below. There's no window here, but your car is below, um, I'd say, the nearest window to the office. There's no windows in the office. The car is um so we could re you're saying we could repel out the window to the car. You could. We have explosives though, don't we? Not yet. Not yet. We were supposed to go back and uh talk to the guy once we uh finished up here. Um, okay, then I will, um, I'll head over to that window and I'll, uh, bust it out and start setting up our, uh, repelling gear. Sure. All right. Yeah. You tie it to a Got desk, here. to a wall, to a pillar. There's pillars, uh, all throughout the load bearing pillars. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Structurally right, sound building. <laughs> uh, it right. is available. I like this idea. It is available on drive through RPG, Jagged. Um, like I said, you can use that link down below to find it. You can play it on on Roll20. If you search character sheets, There's the, we're using the Cyberpunk Red one that's in there right now. It needs some work. We're just going to say that <laughs> at this point. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you smash a window out with your gun, and you start uh, you start setting up ropes to repel. I like it. Uh, we got the guard who's lying there bleeding. He's going to stand up, and he sees you doing that crash and he's gonna try to unload his heavy pistol on you as you're doing that whoa but he misses he's Oof. bleeding and he's injured and he's wobbling and there's blood dripping in his eye and he fires and it goes wide and you look you spin around and you see him he's like leaning up against the desk he's got one arm on his gut where he's bleeding and he's holding out his heavy 
pistol firing at you, but he he was not lucky. Creighton. Shooting the plaster off the wall by my head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Creighton, you are up. Yeah, I'm going to unload on this guy. Ooh, yeah. That's five over. Okay, let's do it. I'll put a new... I got a whole bunch of music in here for this. All right, cool. All right, here's the first damage roll. Oh, that's you, crap again. Doing the ones. Yeah, I know. It's terrible. Three more sixes on top of that. 21 altogether. All right, so what? As you get a point blank to this guy, and you just put your assault rifle. You're like, what, like an M16? It just like point oh, yeah. blank into his right. chest. Just and take he, his just, chest he, he expires. Yeah. He's done. There's blood. Again, splatters everywhere. Screaming. And he just slumps over, and he's just a mess. Just like hamburger lying there. Um, if, I, if I can get to the door of that room, that's where I'm gonna position myself. Yeah, you get to the door. You guys have like two Inside, minutes. Inside, but two minutes okay. left before security shows up, and this whole building is swarmed by security and first responders. Drew, you're up. You're in the cubicle, yeah. and you're you're jacked into the system. Jacked. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to looking at my actions that I can take here. Um. I, I'm not noticing any other uh, netrunners on, on the network. You're not at this point. All right. Um, that's the case. I'm just going to uh, spend my first action just cloaking, uh, like just making sure that I'm not uh, immediately visible. Um, and... ah. Too many windows. There we go. I <laughs> know. Uh, two, two. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, a <laughs> 13. 13? Right yeah, that is a success. Oh, sweet. And then... Um, for the next one, I'm going to... Um, try to... What programs do I see running um, on the net? In this building right now? Uh, in, the, in the building right now that I can... Uh, Like what, what's currently running that might um, interfere? Uh, there are some anti-programs running right now, um, and it looks like there's a, a sectioned off area that is heavily secured and guarded, and there's a hellhound um, on it. Okay. <laughs> now just a, just a wee one. Why the safe alarm? Do you remember that last time? Yeah. There were yeah, like there were like three-headed dogs. Hellhounds. Yeah, hellhounds being on. <laughs> Virtual hellhounds that fight that you and crazy. bite you. So there is a hellhound protecting something. You don't know what. Interesting. Probably um, the room we're going to. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, the bulb. Yeah. What is? So like the the, the jump start like oh, okay. e reference just has uh, like an example local net and hellhound is that just just level five without any like explanation i'm trying to figure out what i can do to it um you can try and attack a hellhound um it is it's like again visualizing it as a elevator and floors you're like on the third floor and it's on the fifth floor so you need to like hack your way up there to engage it so it's still got it you see it it sees you but you have to close that gap if you want to attack it and then get to what it's guarding all right yeah um would I, I would then, uh, so I'm cloaked right now. Um, I would then like back door up to, um, the fourth floor, up to the fourth, fourth floor. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, it's a DV 14. It says Sounds in the good. book, I'll spend the two luck. All right. Two luck. You're in undetected. Hellhounds. We got, we got new music going. All right. And those are your actions, or did you have one more? I have one yeah. more. Can I? Uh, I don't know if I want to bump up to five. If that's the one that the Hellhound's on. The Hellhound um, is on five. Yeah. Uh, if I'm still, if I'm still cloaked, um, mm -hmm. I might try it. Yeah. Why not? I'll, I'll backdoor up to level five then. Okay. I will roll its awareness. If you're gonna go up there. And that's a 16. That's a crit, actually. So I oh, will... let's roll another d10. 
So 18. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna roll. I have to beat a number. Okay, it does not see you. Nice. It failed. So you're on the same level as it now. Yeah. And it's unaware of your presence. All right, good job. Vance Vix. All right. Vance is um, probably just going to, I don't know, not really much to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, probably just head towards the, I mean, we're trying to go upstairs, right? To get No, to you're the just trying to get office. to the office like dead ahead. You can just like walk over it. Yeah, Jury's already it. in it. You've we're killed it, the guards yeah. between you and it. I got you. Okay. I didn't know. Someone shoot uh, that guard that's shooting at me. I got you. He's out. I think Crichton did. Crichton just like yeah. walked up to yeah. a point blank with his assault rifle and just He's unloaded done. on him. <laughs> exactly, which is why I'll just go ahead and take up the door and watch their back while they mess around in the office. Sure. So you and Crichton are standing, uh, <laughs> dog with the angel wings, uh, standing uh, side nice. by side the door. So Jury's the only one who's in there right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so we don't have guards. I'm gonna get out of the turn order. You guys are out of it. We have a couple minutes here before everybody arrives on spot. So you're looking around and you're. You don't know where the safe is that's containing these materials. You, that was the one thing that you guys don't have intel on. Otherwise, you would have just gone in there. Remember, they would have just gone in there and they would have like heavy handed to him and figured out where this information was and get the information out of him. So you don't know where it is in this room. Um, You can make me perception checks, whoever's in the room. All right. All right. Since I'm outside the door, is that close enough? being in the room or so you can you can go in there and start kicking around oh well it doesn't matter because jury got it We're like right on the nose oh okay you go over nice. to the bookshelf and you start like throwing books out and you see a safe at the back of the uh behind a bunch of books uh do we have any kind of code we were given or anything like that or is it a portable like a small one to pick up and carry or no it's it's in the wall and there is a lock on it. It's electronically, uh, well, there's a lock on it, and you can also tell that there is an electronic uh, wire to the to the, okay. the safe. Break but at this my... point, the alarm's already going off, so you don't really care. Um, I'll break out my toolkit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're going to go to work. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I, it's, I was going to just, but it's written in the book. A 20 intelligence roll, but we have perceptions, it's different with the old system, uh, finds it, and a 23 pick lock opens it. And I was going to adjust those numbers, but you nailed what's actually written in the book. So you pull out your tools, you start tinkering with it, and all of a sudden there's just like a click, and the door swings open. Inside, there is like a USB. Uh, there's also some SD cards, and there's some notes and files. I just rake it all into yeah, a bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You rake it in. Oh, and you you head back out there. So Vance is at the door. Crichton's at the door. Crash is uh, rigged up um, uh, a rope to rappel down. Yeah, as soon as I, uh, I drag it all into a bag, I just turn and I'm immediately like, go, 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 swinging my arms and I'm running. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I'm already headed out the window. Uh, I tell the I tell the <laughs> gang, uh, I'll have it ready for you. So everybody just make me an athletics check to rappel down. This is really just see if you critically fail. This is going to be a very right. easy check. It's I'll not... be the last one guarding okay. our back. So you're good. Vance, you're good. Crash, you're good. Um, athletics test? Okay, here we yeah. go. Yeah. You're, you're like made of athletics. You're good. I should be good, yeah. It's really just see if anybody kind of falls in a panic and hurts themselves. Did our runner Vance, get you even... Uh, our runner just stepped away to go to the bathroom, yeah, I IRL. The, uh, Vance, you even got a crit. You could even, like, roll another D10 and add it on there if you wanted to, if you want to do it in style. Repel it in style. All right. No. Um, yes. Okay, I thought you were sorry. into the music. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just reading something. Oh, it's all good. It's <laughs> what, all what, good. what did you say to me? Sorry. I'm I was going to really say, you rolled a crit, reading. so if you wanted to roll another D10, you could, and you could, like, just repel down there in style, even though you're already... Yeah. You already like, seated, style it doesn't matter. Oh, 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 that's 2d10. Hold on, sorry. Uh, oh. All right, yeah, 10. Anyway. Oh, another. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I accidentally <laughs> rolled two the first time. It, well, it doesn't, it doesn't keep exploding, unfortunately. Oh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, and for the sake of time, we're going to say that Drew was there and made it down as well. So you guys rappel down, and you get into the car, and you can hear sirens, and you can, from the first responders, you're assuming, coming on the scene, you can hear um, all kinds of yelling out on the streets. You can hear people screaming, and there is panic. But you are at the car. You're at the back of the building, the private parking lot. The back of the building. And you're at your car. There is Book the guard crash. underneath one of the cars. Did you want to do anything with him before you leave? Or are you just getting out of there? You've got about a minute now before the security shows up. Well, I'm in the trunk. We can put him there. Jerry, how bad do you want this stuff? Uh, we As long as I want to keep it. But if it's impairing our way to get out of here quick, then it doesn't matter. And is Matt going to let us keep it the next game anyway? Why not? I never said you didn't have the helicopter. I just said they would come and try and take it back from you. <laughs> uh. All right, so I grab that guy, throw him in the trunk. Yeah, throw him in the trunk. Up. Bloodied and dead and bleeding everywhere. You want his tech? Yeah, and you peel out of there. Um, Crash, this is, this is where you shine. This is what you're yeah. made for, right? So you're down there. You've got the, the goods. Go ahead, crash, and make me a driving roll as you peel out of there, and you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna try to avoid attention and shake anybody who's on you. So you drive out of there, you plow through, you go down the sidewalk. Remember how I said there were sidewalks lined with trees separating the buildings? You're up on the sidewalk, you blow through there and right past some maracas security. Uh, they're like, oh, who's that? Where did they? Where did that car? And they pull their guns out. And uh, what do you what do you do? Like, what does this look like, Crash? As you zoom past? Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm staying on the sidewalk because uh, I know I know most of the city, right? Yeah. So I'm staying on the sidewalk here, and um, uh, people are jumping out of the way. I'm I'm knocking over the little rickshaws and the little uh, <laughs> stuff that's set up outside of buildings. And then uh, I know that there's a uh, department store, like a. Uh, huge glass window coming up uh, on the right so as soon as I, I cross the uh, street and then uh, turn right uh, into the glass window and we drive through the lobby of the of the um, of the little uh, department store and out the back and then we're in an alley and we're off yes perfect super cinematic and I'm getting and I and I switch the station a few times while I'm sitting yeah. up front and get get this exact jam going and I'm just like <laughs> you just turn it up yeah just crank it up to where it's hurting everyone's ears while we're just barreling out of there <laughs> alright where are you headed do you want to go back to Forlorn Hope to meet back up with Cronus or what do you want to do sounds like a good idea right yeah, I don't know. maybe we go straight go. to the we got the ship's name right you want to go straight to the docks uh well you have to get into the information you have to access it now he's um i keep forgetting that guy's name he said to come back to Kronos. see him Krona says Kronos. once you get it come back to see me and we'll we'll discuss the next steps yeah i'm just saying do we need to or can we do this uh maybe we we take this uh, on ourselves well, if, if Drew can hack in there or, or whatever, get us the information, I'm good with going. All right. Um, so Drew, what do you got for us? Drew, you're going to have to try and access this information. Yeah, I can do that. Um, yeah, it did. I noticed that, Oak. Um, but uh, it's, this sheet needs work. We'll leave it at that. Um, I, I just don't know what the rationale is behind it. I, it might just it might be a completely uh, um, understandable thing, but it's also just not mechanically what the I'll game. I'll link you the you the, the um, forum thread yeah. after this, and you could take a look at the rationale. I didn't understand it, but right. that's fine. That's neither here nor there. Um, yeah. um, yep. So you 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 put the you put I will say it's like a thumb drive or micro SD card or something like that. You put it in your in your uh, your net runner. Deck. Yeah, your deck. And um, before you get anywhere, it comes up in Spanish. It says password with a question mark on either side. Um, I'm gonna say uh, I backdoor it. You don't yeah. know Spanish. Um, 
the so, one thing that foils our plans, those yeah. being monolingual. No, no one took Spanish in high school? Come on. <laughs> oh, I took it. All right. in, night, in Night City? Everybody knows Spanish? Uh, uno, 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 uno. So uno, go ahead uno, and make uno, me translate or something. Well, I mean, role. uno, 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 trace. <laughs> yeah. Interface role? Interface. You're going to try and hack into this thing? It says in here to use a decryption program, but I don't think that exists in the quick start. So we'll just use like a backdoor or something like that. Yeah, it's a backdoor action. Um, so that would be an interface here. Hmm. Look, look, look. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm using that luck here because I don't want to. I'm gonna. It's, it's a twenty-two. Oh, I don't have that. I don't have that luck. I wouldn't even had that luck. To begin with so what were we, what so were we hacking, suddenly you start to see you see password is on the screen and it starts to like blur to like ones and zeros and binary and it starts to like shake and shake and, and then it just kind of turns into nothing <laughs> did it just corrupt itself yep. and that was just trying to hack into something that was trying to get into it mm. you've been the most so-so net runner we've had uh, <laughs> so far <laughs> Give well, me a t-shirt well, that says I'm, that, I'm looking please. through those notes and stuff. <laughs> so, so. The notes and stuff we got, is there anything that might give the password on it? I don't know. Is, is it wiped now? It's, it's, that was, as far as you can tell, it's wiped. Yeah. Um, I might be able to salvage it, but I, I don't think... I don't know how much uh, we Was can... this what we were going to get paid? We were going to trade this for the money, right? Is this what the, you broke it? Well, you were supposed to get this information, no, go no, back no. to Kronos. It'll he be was, all right. He was going right. to <laughs> be able to find out the name of the ship that you're supposed to go destroy tonight. And, uh, and stop. Vince, don't you, do you know anyone, man? Uh, <laughs> I know something. I know a lot of people. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Who am I calling? Specific. Any of the, um, any so of the he, tech that we stole from that, but the guy in the body in the trunk, does he have anything that would help if we, you know, tech it out? And I have no idea. I'm, I'm just grasping at straws here. From what yeah, I remember, just, he had like, computer it. And hence, he yeah. had like dim light vision. He had like a built-in oh, okay. earpiece, and he had um, <laughs> nothing computer was, like, tech like wise and really. stuff. So yeah, it was more like security, like okay. personnel. All right. Also, if it was in Spanish, uh, it was likely not for the eyes of the private security anyway. And uh... Uh, do you guys screw this up? Do we need to go back to Kronos? Yeah, we. I think so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, Your no. turn. Yeah. So yeah. You, you back I, pull, I pull the e-brake and do yes. a one eight. Yeah. <laughs> and Thanks, back to Kronos. <laughs> you make your way back, back to through that underground tunnel. Yes, yeah. you go back towards Forlorn Hope. You make it back there in a flat thirty minutes, even Wait. with this, uh, this like little uh, adventure escapade that you guys went on, doing your own thing. The oh shit handle, that's true. Um, <laughs> you guys pull back up. Uh, There's not as big of a crowd that was there before. You know, about an hour has passed since you guys left and started this, or a little more than an hour. And there's still some familiar faces out there. And uh, you, as you pull up, come to an abrupt halt. You screech tires people shake their heads uh and you guys fish tail up. it into a parking spot all right yes yeah. definitely people shake Trash. their heads like wait oh, where's my, my driving roll they're back you do <laughs> oh look at this 23s all 20s all day long for uh, crashes driving nice. yeah you easily all right, all right creighton will lead the way and if that front security guy says anything he's gonna just deck him yeah <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I just turned to I'm like, do you mind if I stay in here? I think uh, somebody's going to be pissed at me in there. <laughs> yeah, so you, you can, march you in. Do whatever you like, want. Oh, yeah. you're back, and he's kind of laughing and trite, and you just kind of push him out of the way. And yeah. Head listen, right listen. back in, and we Cronus just play is sitting dumb. at his... Just play dumb. Cronus is sitting at his pro his table oh, yeah. in his booth, and he looks, at, he looks at you, and he, like, nods, like, knowingly, like, hmm? Yeah. All right, he just kind Let's of do it. puts his head towards the back room again and gets up and leads his way back to the back office. And, uh, yeah, throws his feet back up, and he's like, oh, so I see you, you did it. You're down one. There's Crash. Crash, are you still in the car? 
Yeah, I'll leave it running. Sure. I'll so he notices that you're down, Drew. So he's like, "You're you're down one. You you lost one." Uh, yeah, the uh, a little a little wounded. Your net runner, eh? Couldn't hack it. <laughs> uh, broom. Yeah, it's uh. funny. It's funny. <laughs> All right. So what did you get? Uh, we got the stuff. We got the data. Here it is. We got these All chip right, so you toss things, it down. And... My, my character has a three tech, so he's like these chip thing. Yeah. It's totally a normal thing for him to say. So he takes, he takes, uh, yeah, the same one that, that Drew tried to hack into, and he pops it into his deck, and it comes up, and he's like, there's nothing on here. What the hell? What is, what, what is this? It's, uh, it's the chip so, thing. Somebody, the... somebody tripped a security program. Ah, uh, yeah, don't beats the hell out of me, man. I, I, I'm calling it, it a chip. bag, and we came here. Well, yeah, I'm, is... call, I'm calling it a chip thing. I obviously don't know the specifics here, but we just pulled it out of the safe, and we is, well, this, it. Is, this is no good. This is no good. What am I supposed to do with this? I don't know. Fix it. Send well, it to a repair man. I don't know. I don't know what you do with chips. We're on limited time here. What happened? Yeah. That's not our problem. You said bring it to you. We brought it to you. Yeah, you didn't tell us what to bring you. What game were we playing? Yeah, you didn't tell us to bring you a chip filled uh, with stuff. Get your guy in here and let's take care of this. <gasps> Was I supposed to pop it into my computer or whatever and check it on the little bleep bloop thingy, the internet yeah. thingy or whatever? I don't know. I have no idea. Ah, uh, hold on. And he gets up and he walks out of the room, and he's pissed. He is just pissed. At the does, he, does he have <laughs> mint? Does he? Uh, is this like a what? What sort of a room is this again? This is just like a little back office, like back adjacent office? to the kitchen. No windows, no doors. No windows, I no take, doors. Yeah, yeah. I take a small handful of his complimentary mints and stuff them in my pocket when he walks away. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> So he uh, he leaves he leaves for a few moments and he comes back and he's got uh, he's got a, a net runner with him like decked out in like the best gear and he goes uh, this here her name's Moss she's the best in the business hold on we'll see if we can get anything out of there so she walks over she puts it like into a into a a deck that's like on her implants on her head. And uh, she's like, someone, someone tripped the uh, the security measures on here. What the hell? Yeah, like I told him, we we plucked it out of the the safe, booked it. We didn't have time to check for yeah. data. Yeah, and if if everyone doesn't know this, we're kind of on a time limit here. Can well, we? Is, uh, she says get this moving? is going to take some time, Chrono. So I'm not going to be able to get through this right away. I'm going to have to try and and, and reset. This is the best. <laughs> Damn, son. <laughs> I'm the bad her out. Uh, you had to shoot guns. I gotta do something. Come on. I turned to Crash and just ask, how's it going? Because, like, I, I have nothing. <laughs> so what are you going to do, Crash? This is the best. <laughs> what do you do for fun? I drive. We got to go somewhere else to get this thing uh, figured out or what? Give me some time. Keep him Keep him quiet. Shut him up. She says to Kronos. All right, he'll take a step back. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird that they arms. would store something broken in a safe, right? That's so dumb. What a bunch of dumbasses. We're going to go get some uh, drinks. So did, did get Drew... find yeah, you go get some drinks at the bar. Did Drew, okay. did Drew lose their life uh, trying to get into this? What happened? You're down. Nobody like I said, you're down one. What, what happened? Nobody tried to get in anything. We, we, we just grabbed the chips out of the safe and we booked it, like I said. Oh, it's all over the it's all over the news. It uh, something going on there at the Steiner Building. You must have tripped the alarm, no? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we we were trying to take it easy, and then some guy, I guess, was stepped out for a smoke break or something and noticed us. So we had to pump a few rounds in him. <sighs> you know. So what happened to Drew? Oh, she dead? Oh, no, she's in the there. She's back in the car, bleeding a little bit. She's all right. Ah. Uh. Oh, bleeding. Okay, just like uh, just like when you arrived here, huh? Am I in there or am I out? <laughs> yeah, you're in there. I think she's a hemophiliac uh, or whatever it's called. Uh, I don't know. That's a lot of questions. Can we get on with the business here? Hey, who's yeah, working for who here, Creighton? Who's working for who here? You want your you want your eleven hundred euro bucks? Nah, uh, five fifty. We already got five fifty from you. If you want to give us eleven hundred, that's fine. But <laughs> all right, then Moss Moss after a few moments goes, all, all right, I'm I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. C come here, and she calls over Kronos and. He leans over the desk and he's kind of scanning the information. He goes, "All right, we got our target. The ship's name is Celeste. It's flying a Norwegian flag." Uh, 
What? But uh, I don't see any connections to the Colombians other than he's not known as a sympathizer. What's what is this? Oh, he's got a chemical firm down in Colombia. All right, there's our tie. Oh, sure. So they're under. They're flying under the Norwegian flag. It's the Celeste that you're looking for. Celeste. I'll call that back to Drew. This is a 30-foot yacht. And it's the... Oh, wow. He, he looks. He shakes his head. This is It's deployed with a Black Ops team. Ooh. Um, it looks like they're going to uh, gonna die along with it. So. It looks like they've got orders to secure a small, a small airfield on the outskirts of Night City. And prepare to receive an aircraft coming in from Colombia with a major shipment of synthetic drugs. The plane's due in 24 hours. You need to take out that yacht now. So that they don't secure that landing that landing strip. Okay, we're going to need a bag of explosives. Done. And some grenades. He, uh, he goes, <laughs> scuba gear... Uh, he he also pulls out a briefcase, opens it up, and he's got some mods, some chips. Here's some swimming mods, because you know, three of you don't look like you're uh, you're too good in water. So here's some mods nah, to help okay you out. Water. Here's now us. would be uh, now would be a good time for that chopper. <laughs> it's not wrong. Is that what you're gonna ask? Uh, I. Uh, I I don't that know. Be trace a little bit. We just need some. Uh, yeah, I thought we were doing the Frogman thing here. RPGs yeah. or something. He's yeah. He's like yeah. I've got some under. I've got some underwater explosives. I'll give you. I give you four of them. These things will blow up sky high if you set them off simultaneously. But you've got three options to get in here. This thing is heavily guarded, so it's it's off on its outskirts by it by itself. It's not around any of the other ships in the in the dock or in the uh, in the inlet. So you can go by air. That's gonna alert them. You can go. On the water, uh, we have a submersible. Like, it looks like they they've got uh, sonar and radar, above ground and in the water. Uh, if you go in the water, though, you at least you get the bonus if it's murky. Water's Plus, we might want to put there. explosives on the bottom of the boat too. So. Goes, that is an option, but just be aware that there is sonar, so they are tracking movement down there. And it looks so like we need a helicopter, first, then. a jet boat, and a submersible. <laughs> so yeah, like, get I get you the boat. Three. I get you the boat, but I don't have any submersibles. Like I said, I can get you scuba gear. I can get you right. underwater explosives. That can go off. No yeah, let's problem. Get a boat and, and then let's get a boat. Yeah. We'll uh, park outside the... Uh, we'll, we'll, spear oh, go ahead, guns. Sorry. Oh, you're good, man. No, I was just going to say, uh, we could try and try and figure out what the range of their sonar is, park outside of it, and then uh, try and disable it with uh, net running. And then right. uh, yeah. dive the way. That will be good. That, that's worked out good tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's worked out so so. <laughs> that's a 40, 40 meter yacht. One, one of those Dude. so's is good though. So we, we need we need that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I don't know. There's a boat. I mean, the 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 helicopter does sound good, but that would be loud. Um, yeah. No, I think, like you said, if we take a boat to a safe place and then scuba underneath, what are they going to do with that anyway? Even if yeah. they see something. It's I do want to try and disable that sonar, though. If we yeah, can, for if we sure. Just... Yep. Yeah, he says, yeah, you could. Well, you've lost your, your net runner. Uh, she got no, 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 no. Okay, lost. well, yeah, you can try, you try to hack into that. So you've got the sonar, you got the radar. There's lights. It looks like they got floodlights. Those things will see 100 meters out. If you get close above water, there's, it looks like there's lights underwater too, but you're going to have a better chance because it's so murky down there. You're going to get closer. I need Before some drones. Lights pick you up. <laughs> no shit. This would be like the perfect. perfect. This, is, this is up to you, but we got to finish this tonight. You got your explosives, you got your gear. You blow up the Celeste and we're done. Uh, Silencers. Right. And we can get some RPGs and just light it up from a distance. I want to get some of those personal like diving propellers that you hold on to that sort of like yeah yeah. Pull, uh, yeah he goes yeah yeah. yeah i'll get you i'll get you you want all all right. you five you got five yeah that 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 way we can get get there quickly because if honestly uh, i don't know if we just get the boat get the boat and park really far away from the boat there quickly because if honestly if we just get the boat get it park really far out if we have those things we can go underwater all the way yeah yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, quietly I'll, I'll on the radio with those. I'm, I'm gonna call back to drew hey is there anything you're thinking that you need um just 
enough Tech waterproofing, wise. enough waterproofing to make sure that I can still uh, use my shit. But aside from that, uh, or do you, you in a bubble? In water? Any kind of boosters or uh, get from the boat? From the boat, okay. Yeah, we can I, leave yeah you can leave on the so. boat. Honestly, I'll be fine. Okay. Um. All right, where, where are we picking all this up? He goes, it's here. To, uh, it's here. Yeah. What, you want it now? I'll tell you what. I'll arrange <laughs> yeah, for my man to meet now. you at the at the <laughs> at the pier. You out there, and uh, it'll be waiting for you. Sounds perfect. Let's get going. So all he right. tells you a dock. He tells you a dock number to go to, and uh, everything will be waiting for you on a boat there. And we're doing this tonight or tomorrow? Now he says. Yeah, no. it, it, right. plane's coming in tomorrow. So, all right. got it. Just making sure. Yep. All right, so you head on out. Your driver drives you to the uh, to the docks. You get there, and you go to the dock number that uh, that Kronos identified. And sure enough, there is a speedboat waiting there for you. It's full of scuba gear. You got spear guns. There's four large square boxes. Uh, you open them up, and there's explosives in there, and there's an adhesive that you can use underwater to stick to the bottom of the boat. Uh, right. You do have those propelling devices pull you through the water and uh you uh you, you a head on out all right let's distribute the explosives just so you know two or three people are carrying it you know just in okay. case someone gets taken out we can still finish the job what's our plan if the boat gets what's our plan if our boat gets spotted and destroyed and we lose our, our net runner unfortunately <laughs> i'm for sure Swim to shore. Okay. Well, then let's pick a cardinal direction that we all sort of go for, like a spot on the beach, maybe on the map while we're on the way there. Sounds good. Or spot on the docks, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. The opposite of where the bullets are coming from. Yeah, exactly. All right, cool. I just want to have a backup plan in case our uh, net runner gets offed while we're, <laughs> while we're playing World's bombs. okayest. <laughs> World's okayest net runner. Uh, <laughs> dang. Yeah. We lost her. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, did we get any kind do we have any kind of communication for underwater? I'll say your scuba gear will come with it. Okay. He'll he's Perfect. provided that for you. Okay. Alright, Crash will oh. grab that run to the helm of the boat and fire it up. Let's go. Alright. All right. You get, get in the boat up. and you start heading way, way, way far, far out. You pass all the other boats and yachts and everything else that's docked here. And you head far out to the coordinates that have been provided. Latitude and longitude of where you can find the Celeste. And you're 300 meters out. And you can see it. There's a big spotlight that's scanning the area. You're, you're, you're looking. You're squinting. You can see that there's another boat, a smaller boat attached to it. And there's a tarp over the front of that smaller boat. And you can just make out like, like figures like moving on the deck. You can count, oh, I'll say like three from here. And you remember Kronos had mentioned that a uh, hundred meters out is when that spotlight will be able to see you on the surface. Right. Yeah, I'm going slow and quiet, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll get right up to the uh, to the edge of the spotlight and uh, and kind of anchor it. Sure. Or, uh, I won't anchor it, but I'll, I'll I'll come to a stop. Okay. Yeah, you come to a stop here, right. and the boat is just kind of rocking up and down on the waves as you're there, and it's silent. It's quiet out here. There's no noise whatsoever out on the water other than the, the waves lapping up against the side of the boat. All right. Well, we'll start gearing up. Um, While we were traveling out there, could I tinker with all of the uh... – the thing that makes us move faster to make it move even faster. Yeah, yeah, make me roll. That's a that's a great idea. Mr. Fixer. Nice. So All right, it moved. It initially moved 20 meters every 10 seconds, so it's going to bump you up to 30 meters every 10 seconds with that. So these things are increased. So you got the boat in the distance, the light scanning the horizon. You're gearing up to head into the water. The water is murky. It's cold. You can barely see, like, into the water whatsoever. It's pretty deep at this point as well. 
uh, this this part of the water and this part of the uh, where you're at and do you all want to head in or what's the plan Drew you want to uh, see if you can jam the sonar before yeah, we jump in yeah do, do I have range do, uh, can I get there yeah you're 100 meters out yeah you can you could attempt it it's going to be difficult from this uh, this distance um, I, I turn to our tech and I'm, I ask, is there anything you can do to help me out here with that? Um, boost the sig signal? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah boot, a signal booster. Can I make a roll on that? or? Yes, please. Look at the techie with, like, making Solid. all the rolls tonight. Solid. Yeah, yeah, so he boosts it um, another 100 meters. And uh, so it's going to lower the difficulty of, of this roll for you. So right. you want to get into the sonar or like you want to disable it. You want to get into the boat and then you want to get into the sonar. These are separate roles, right? Yep. yep. So the boat, uh, I'll give you um, a 13 sure. to access the boat. All right. So that's a success. Nice. And now you want to turn off the sonar. Yeah, that'll be a control. Yeah. Yeah. A control. Uh, let's see here. Control. Well, while you're in there, if you can disable the spotlights as well, we can take the boat even closer. Well, if, if you want um, if you want to go in hard and fast, I can get that done. I figured you wanted to go a bit more stealthy, but... Well, as good a driver as he is... Uh... If, you can, if you can disable or jack with the spotlight, then I can get us in a lot closer. Yeah. So yeah, it's a difficulty it's... of 12. Sure. Do you want to get yeah. to the spotlight first. or the sonar? Either. Um, I have three actions per round, so I yep. can get this all done like pretty much simultaneously. Um, and is it parked or is it out in the ocean, like is, where it can start running? It is out in the ocean. It is far, far out from the rest. If you have three actions, you might want to first is you should do the sonar, then the lights, then the engines. Um, well, the I, first I, action I, was getting in was uh, getting in was one action. Right. Um, and I imagine the engine is just not on the first floor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would sonar. Sonar is the most important because either plan of attack, we have to have that out. Yeah, um, I'll get the sonar uh, just uh, like disabled. Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's doing that weird thing again. Oh no, yeah. That, All right. I did roll. I roll, rolled a seven plus seven there. So that's roll. roll your, you have your own macro that you set up, didn't you? Uh, it's it was through the sheet. It's still um. I'm I'm just gonna do like, uh, yeah. basic commands here. At this yeah, point. this is critical. <laughs> Plus, yeah, and you can see right there it says seven seven. There, that's a fifteen. That's a success. So you're going into what yeah. the lights first or the sonar? Um, going for the sonar first. Yeah, so you're sure. in the sonar. Do you want to do anything with the sonar with your last action? Um, do we want to? Uh, you, can't, you can't really falsify a sonar, sonar at all. No, so. you can just like turn, turn it, it off. off. I'm gonna so turn you're it off. in, so you can control it now. Yeah, so you've taken mm -hmm. control of the node, and then you use like an additional net awesome. action to reposition cameras or turn it off. So, yeah, it would take your last action to like turn it off or disable it. Okay, or loop so it. Font, Font says, Don't disable it, they'll notice, just loop it. I can't. I cannot loop a sonar. <laughs> that's, I don't think that's how it works. Could you make it? Could you make small objects appear on it, like fish or something? No. Well, can you? you can't Drew, have a false Drew is an Aquaman. echo. Like if it's just having an echo repeat of nothing. Um. I mean, that that's up to our GM. If uh... so, you just want it to keep like beeping, like there's nothing there, bleeping. And yeah. Just a thing with nothing. Like uh, effectively, works. like uh, break the display to effectively just be reading zeros, no matter what. I think you could. I think you could loop it yeah. the same way you would loop anything so. else. You're just putting it on like a, a five second loop or right. something. It could still mm -hmm. be sending the signal out, just not receiving that signal yeah. back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We can do that. Or yeah, if it's a display in a court, can you just disable the this part that sends out the echo? And that way, if it's not working, then it's not returning anything, so it's going to show zero on the screen. 
this is all uh like up to matt here so I, like I, you're, so you're saying like to cut the audio though like so there wouldn't well, no, be it's, any like it's got the sensor that sends out the echo for the the, the right. Ping. right if you disable that ping Receiver, well, yeah it's the if you're looking at the old school where you've got the little green circle yeah, yeah. and you got the blip going around yeah. it's still going to be working but it's not going to be receiving anything back ah got you got you got you Yes, we could do that. We could do that. <laughs> What's the number? <laughs> the number is going to be a fourteen. Uh, I already rolled the thirteen. Is uh, do you want me to roll again here? Like I can uh, give you a, can, can you give can luck, luck it. That. Do you have okay. luck left? I'm point luck. Yeah, I've got luck. Okay. All right. So yeah. you are successful. So the 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 sonar is is looped. Yeah, sonar is down. Um, Interesting. So far, this is the critical part for having a net runner in the party. I volunteer to do the uh, the the diving portion of our plan. Okay. So are we are we gonna shut the lights off too, and then just have some people on the surface, some people at the bottom? Because it would be good to set explosives on the side of the boat as well as the bottom too. So maybe not everyone should just. Yeah, you've been water. given four marine demolition charges. Yeah, how do you want to? What do you want to do with those? Do you want to do the whole diving thing? Because if she can keep that off and go and take another turn and disable the lights we can just speed boat up on that thing slap them on and be gone like above water yeah like have our driver who rolls awesome come hauling ass in skidding up to there so we can slap stuff on the sides and then just haul ass out hmm. we can, <laughs> like we can with, cover with guns as we go up there i like that idea what, what are the i like it it's uh, kind of crazy but Yeah, that's that's the yeah, thing. Yeah, can you? Uh, can I don't you know. Disable? We haven't done anything stealthy this whole time. We might no, as well. No, stealth hasn't worked with my cyber. I haven't tried it. What kind of guns are on the <laughs> guns? There or anything mounted? Anything big? Fifty cal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, what, what are the like? Sort of my my concerns are like, um, what's on the network? Um, what are the floodlights? What are they doing? Like, is it like a just so many floodlights uh, giving a 100 meter radius from no matter what? Or mm -hmm. swing all the lights one, in where it blinds them? It's sweeping around. It's sweeping around the light. Um, is there just one light? There is just one light. I'll tell you what. Um, Crichton, you wanted to know about weapons and mounted weapons. Yeah. Go ahead yeah. and make me a perception roll. Okay. Let's have a difficulty of a fourteen. Okay. Oh. Um, you're scanning here, and you know you know guns. This is this is what you do. This is why All you're right. here. And you're looking. You don't see anything <laughs> on the boat itself, but the boat okay. tied to it, adjacent to it, underneath that tarp, it looks like there's a. That might be a really big gun. Oh, it's on bad. the on the the other boat attached, the smaller boat, the speed boat, right. Right. has a really uh, big gun the underneath boat. the tarp. And is that the one you said there were three people on that? Or was no, the, the yacht itself. The there, you can make out, um, you can make out three figures, kind of like walking and patrolling. Maybe we can do something crazy. Have a person or two dive and get that boat away from the yacht, and then. Rip roar our boat in. Well, if it explodes and it's attached to the yacht, I don't think it's getting away either. Right, but if they hear, I, I mean, I get it. But if they hear the, our boat coming, yeah. can I launch the boat? Is it is it on it like an arm or something? It is not. No. Oh, it's so it's just it's tied up. Josan, um, right. as I'm saying, two seconds they jump on, pull the tarp up, yeah, and light us up. Josan, thank okay. you for the follow. Then if we're gonna go, if we're gonna do the water underwater attack, we need our driver to come with us so he can get that boat to get us out. <laughs> that's a crazy ass plan but i kind of like it this is it this, this, this is it this is the blow up boat this is the finale so yeah however All right. you guys want to yeah. plan this drew can, can drew uh drew can you control the can this you control boat here? that light yeah i was i was gonna say why don't i just um like break the the rotary um engine on the floodlight when it's facing away from us so or have it swivel in and blind the guys on the boat when they try to shoot us well they're they're not all standing together they're patrolling. They're milling about on the boat. But if, if but if I can just like stop the uh, stop the rotor, um, yeah. from like moving Turning. while it's all right, all right. Or right. if you're in radio contact with us, as long as it pivots away from us when we need it to. Okay, we're we're ready to put this all together. So yeah, yeah. So 
as as the spotlight uh, goes goes the other direction, I'm gonna drive the boat in in through the darkness in the gap. I'm gonna cut the engine so that we start coasting forward silently. Drew's gonna uh, disable the light as it's pointing away from us. And then everybody's going to dive out and uh, some some are swimming towards the big boat and and then i'll swim towards the small one how's that sound sounds good uh we should put two people with you though just so one can get down the gun and you can uh drive the boat yeah who wants to shoot the gun i mean i don't care i mean i'll go wherever i don't i don't care you're the gun guy yeah well that's fine i'll go with you i'll go with you that sounds good all right, Crichton and I are swimming yep. toward the little boat. The rest are going to plant explosives on the larger one. And you are you planting them underwater or on above water? Where do you, where oh, were we planting? These will explosives? they go off on underwater? They will. Yeah, they're they're yeah. they're designed. Yeah. They are that. marine explosives. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Then underneath right. the, the surface on yeah. like four corners. Right, because then they can't just grab them and throw them off the boat. So you want to drive up, cut the engine. Then when you're closer, you guys want to dive in with the, the devices to propel you there. Put the all four of us, yeah. And the ones in the boat are just gonna sit there. Oh, and you're gonna you're gonna move the light away from your boat. Yeah. But you want to be closer to make a quick getaway so you can get back to your boat and speed out of there when this thing blows up. Yeah. Right. And Drew, after Drew, after you disabled the light, you could drive the speed. You could uh, exactly. drive the speedboat away too. Right. Do you want to try and grab the speedboat, or do you just want to get out of there? I feel like that's a good synthesis of all of our suggestions, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. All right, then but, let's make So it to happen. drive that speedboat, though, you can't control it. You have to get on it and drive it. You can't, like, yeah. control it. Which, yeah, that's why Crash, me and Crash are uh, going there, right? Drew, Drew will be fine. Sure. Drew's doing, all staying right. in the boat so that we have now. Make me, make me your drive roll there, uh, Crash, <laughs> as you zoom up and coast in. And, uh, Drew, you're going to move the light away from them. Yeah. Um. I, effectively, as 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 the lights is sweeping past us, I'm yeah. I'm going to, uh, nice. like stop the engine so that so that's facing away from us. Okay. Look at Crash with like twenty plus for every roll yeah. when it comes it. to driving. Yeah, I, give it, I give it some uh some gas. Yeah. Get get a good little uh amount of speed going, and then I cut the engine so we uh you know coast a hundred meters or whatever we need to. Oh, oh my nice. god. And that's a crit. That, that's a crit. That is a crit. Roll me another d10. Oh. I think this music right now is perfect for the plot. Well, what happens Not now? That's right. No, it's all right. 18. <laughs> that's just nice added. roll. That's that was sweet. All right. All right. So the you got light one. just as crash. So light sweeps. And as it just passes by you, crash comes in, cuts the engine. You coast forward. And then what? You stall the light on the opposite side? Yeah. Like uh, effectively, I just like uh, uh, stop the engine. And uh, it's like it's parked. Um, yeah, pointing away from you. Uh, so it's from complete us. darkness except for the stars shining down mm-hmm. on you. And you can hear, you can hear what? What's going on? What's going on? You can hear muffled voices. You guys are, oh, I'd In say about two hundred meters out. So the Crichton, Jury, and Vance. Who, who's going in the drink? Who's going in the water? Jury is. All of us except for Drew. Okay, yes. so Drew's staying behind on the boat. Yep. Okay, so you all have your scuba gear on. You all dive in. Explosives. You've got the explosives. <laughs> yeah. I don't Drew, know if Drew, Drew is super is, into uh, that. <laughs> yeah, no. Drew is going to be like hiding. Oh, she's good. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Underneath the the dash. Uh, we're... <laughs> one one hand on the wheel of the boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah effectively. Hang up by the yeah. helm. Your plan B getaway, Drew. Come so on. So you guys get out of the water <laughs> and you start propelling forward. And it's murky. It's hard to see. And you guys start closing the gap. So you're 200 meters out. You get 100 meters out. You get 50 meters out. You get about 30 meters out and you can see those floodlights under the water as well shining. I'm going to re- relay that back to our network. Now, are they moving? They're not moving. They're stationary and they're just kind of shining in various directions. Well, we should be able to go through dark are, spots, shouldn't we? Are they uh, also moving? They are or not is, moving. Nope. They're stationary. Got oh, yeah. it. Um, I'll just flip them off. Yeah, I was just about to ask that. I was, was going to say, to... you could probably still mess with them, Drew, while we're. this is going to take a little while for us to get up there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Point so them we've down. Got, we've got no off, sonar. Whatever. We've got no lights. If we go by the numbers, you said it was 200 yards, and I bumped everything up to 30, so it'd take like 6.6 rounds to get there. Yeah. Can exactly. you flick them off right before we get 
in their radius. That way they're off the shortest amount of time possible. Am I going to be able to, like, my, the only concern is, uh, uh, am I going to be able to, like, know when you're... We, we have radio. You know. Yeah, he said the radios worked yep. underwater. All right, yeah. All right, just, we're almost like, in. I'll just, let, uh, yeah, I'll just let her know when we're almost in the radius. It starts to get slightly dim. And then, say, like, shut yeah, you Yeah, so you shut off the lights. Yeah, it gets dim. You guys just see the lights. Um, and so you're you're slowly coasting up using those little those little devices you're hanging on to, and you get closer and closer and closer, and you guys are just about on the bottom of the boat, and um, everybody make me a perception roll. So so Matt, just to be clear, Crichton and I, Crichton and Crush went for the or going to the oh for the boat. boat? To, yeah, this still, this gunboat. This yes. still, you guys still need to make me a perception check, the two of you. While, while they're going in, am, am, uh, could I like backdoor my way up through the uh, through the system? Yes. All right. Yeah. So you guys, as you get closer with the little lights shining, you see that there's two frogmen down there. It looks like they they came out from through the bottom of the boat. There's a little hatch, and they're down there investigating the lights that are out, and they have not noticed you. I was imagining actual frogmen for a second. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, like special yeah, forces just, frogmen. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Navy SEAL frogmen. It's I'm Sunday night. They're uh, it's Sunday so night. They're the deep ones. Uh, deep ones. Yeah. So there are. It looks like some crew from the boat down there. They have spear guns slung across their backs. Worse. Great. <laughs> and uh, and they're they're investigating the lights that have gone out. Okay, and we have spear guns also, right? You do. That was. Okay. Uh, is there multiple shots with them? Not per round, but can you shoot them? No, no, no. Just one. Yeah, one shot. Oh, that's and it. That's they it. haven't noticed us yet, have they? Right. No, I just rolled. They haven't noticed you. I'm going to try to plant mine and, and move away. So you're going to cut the power stealth on your little me. propelling thing and try to swim yeah. up? Can you make me a stealth roll? Is there stealth in this? Yes. Uh, is, is there, there stealth in this game? Form? There has to be. It's a role playing game. I don't see yeah, it listed as a skill. Would it just be? That means yeah, you don't I got, have it. I got a stealth. That means you do not have it, Mr. Jerry. The so your cultural beaky. familiarity could come into play here. And it was chat had in there before. I think it was page twenty nine. This is where the, the chat is. So that was here. basically my education role, right? It was twenty nine. Yes. Thank you. So what is your education? Oh, I've already. I, I I've got that. I can roll the button. No, from, cultural familiarity is your stat. Uh, simply pair a stat, a skill, and a d10 against the difficulty. Yeah, uh, your Dex is education stealth. is six, so your bonus is two. Two. Oak. Okay, because I've got intelligence of ten, education of six. So you'd have to subtract two from that, so eighteen. Okay. Um, because I just clicked no, the education. But... No, your education, education. Uh, doesn't apply. Y your education confers a bonus. Um, yeah, okay. this is like a special thing. rule. So, so it, it would be a plus 10 one. plus 2. You roll d10 plus 2, yeah. Okay, d10 plus 2. Or do you want, or do you want to let Creighton handle this? <laughs> well, I'm... We've got I'm charges, awesome. don't we? Yeah, you got, you two have the charges, you and Vince. D10. So, nope. Well, I got a five, yeah. so I don't know. Okay. Yeah, no, they they notice you coming up on them. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm going to to plant this. It's murky. Hopefully, they won't notice that I'm putting something on. Actually, the ship. I need to make I need to roll their awareness. They could fail yeah. worse. Actually, Bear and do we here. see the who all sees this? Um, all four okay. of you. Okay. Also, do you get a bonus because I turned off the lights or not? Nah? Or do they get a negative rather? No, we're doing it. Well, actually, yes, they do because of how murky it is. They, they actually do get a negative. I like negatives. I wish I'd thought about that since I'm not a, skilled. I should have just, a, like, propelled myself up there quickly. They have a negative five. They still beat you for their awareness. The flat detail. No, that, that's equal. Oh, is it? I have plus two okay. on my roll. I'm going to give it to you. I'll give it to the player. So you, they do not sense you coming up. I plant my explosive and move back to my propeller thing. Um, so d does my, I'm assuming a memorial of a nine doesn't, uh, get me up the, up the elevator here. No, it does not. Yeah. It does not. Um, um I'm going to jump over to Crash and Vance. So you guys are going up on that little, that little speedboat with the mounted 50 Crash and, uh, Crichton. Crichton. I'm sorry. 
So you guys oh. make your way up there. Are you trying to be stealthy, quiet? Uh, what, are, what are you doing? Yeah, we get uh, yeah. we we get un we go under the boat to yep. the far side of it, uh, yep. so that it's blocking uh, view from the ship. And um, I'll climb over the the side, and I'll try to hot wire it um, while Crichton's probably going for the gun. Yeah. Okay, both of you make me That's stealth rolls. I don't have stealth. What? <laughs> All right, Crichton, you are right. you blended with the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you don't have the skill, you ro just roll a d10. Uh, what's your education, actually? This is where cultural familiarity also comes in. What's your education? Two. Score? Okay, you don't get any bonuses. Just so, just a d10. Ooh, look at that. Critical. And the stat. Oh, roll what's, the, roll what's again. the stat? Critical? I get to roll again? Yeah, roll again. Yeah. You also get a stat on there as well. Oh, uh, what stat? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, stealth is tied to dexterity. Probably dexterity. Oh, dexterity. Right? Yep, you right. So I'll add nine. Oh there. shit! I didn't add a stat on mine. Oh, Paul, what's your stat? Well, you still won. Right. <laughs> still that would have been, like been like a fifteen. So what's your total a, crash? I got a twenty-four. Twenty-four and twenty-four. Nice. Holy crap! Yeah, the two of you guys make it up. Well, I'll roll their awareness, but they're. It's gonna be a miracle. Oh, I rolled a ten. Roll a one. Uh oh. 20, 21. 21. Oh, not good enough. Ah oh, man. All right. Oh, so that's you guys great when a twenty one fails. There's a there's, <laughs> a there's a guy a guy on the on the ship that shines a light on the boat. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's like shining a light on the boat while, while we're climbing on. They're milling about. They've got some machine guns. They got flashlights in there flashing about and they scan yeah over the little speedboat the little boat attached and uh you guys duck under just as he scans his flashlight and he continues on down the deck and you can hear them yelling like what's going on with the lights what's going on what's happening we're dead in the water here there's no sonar actually they're, they're shouting spanish so if none of you well, do they spanish, know there's you no know. sonar you don't know they uh, yeah i i did succeed the role i think but so that they're um, not aware you did succeed the role. You did. Um, so you guys get on the boat undetected. Uh, Jury, you were stealthed underwater. They did not detect you. Vance, you're down there as well with some charges, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you have stealth? No. Uh, no, but I have a decent deck, so it's a D. Do I roll that? Is What's that? your education? Your education is a... Three. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Roll me uh, D10 plus your plus your dex. This is it. They are coded in the are, cultural thing now. You guys get the. Uh... Not very good. So we got ten total. Yeah. And you get a plus one to that, so eleven because of cultural familiarity with a three. Okay. Okay. Cool. They have a minus five. I'm gonna roll. Oh right. shit! So that. you're you're coming up silently. You cut the light 13. on your little propelled device, and um, one of the guys turns around to head back into the boat, and he sees you coming. And uh, he steadies and levels his uh, his spear gun to take a shot at you. No questions asked. You are under here while stuff's going wrong. Skewer. So you rolled a 13. Oh, that's... that's not that good. Um, <laughs> so I haven't really done this, this combat. So we take um, your reflexes, or you take your dex plus your evasion skill and roll a d10. You're going to try to avoid the attack. Is there a button on the character sheet for this? I don't think there is. Evasion. I evasion? have the evasion skill. Yeah. So go ahead and roll me your, your evasion. Alright. Holy nice. crap! That's, That's a, a crit wiggly also. Little fish man. So he, <laughs> he he turns around, he sees you, you just bubbles come out, he levels the spear gun, and it starts to whiz towards you in the water, and you use a little propelled thing that you're hanging on to and you cart out of the way of it. But they're yes. now aware of your presence, and they're going to see Jury as well. So you guys are on borrowed time under there. Mm -hmm. 
So. The jury has his explosives on there, though, right? Jury or has, no? pl yeah, jury, you've planted okay. your. I'm gonna say your two explosives at the, at this point. Okay. What about me? Have I? They planted? noticed you as you were coming up. Oh, uh, to plant something. Okay, I'm still gonna try and plant them. Uh, whatever they can shoot Just all. Go ahead and roll, these... me, roll me initiative. Because right. they only really see you. How how do these explosives works? Is it a trigger? So that's the thing. Yes. So you can set them to all go off simultaneously, uh, and doing so is going to make an even bigger explosion. So yeah, it is. It is a trigger. Okay. That's assuming that you got get them all attached. Uh, so what did you get for your initiative? Ten. Ten. Oh, and I got an eight. Okay, so I'm going to jump. So you've planted your explosives, um, Jury, and you notice that they've that Vance has caught the attention of the two frogmen. And they've one of them has fired their, their spear gun at him. And you can only assume that they're radioing for help. Um, Creighton and Crash, you're up top and you're on the boat. And you're, you're working on getting it started. We, we, we don't know this underwater. No, that. you don't yeah. know what's going on underwater. You're yeah. just planning. So are you, I'm, was the plan to wait for them or was the plan to just get the hell out of there? No, the, the plan was for them to come to, right, to, come the to the boat. Come so to you're this. sitting there and you guys right. approach in the I'm, dark and um, it's taking a little long. You're not aware of what's going on down there, but it's taking a little long for them to come back. Up. I'm, I'm looking under this from the other side of the ship, not my body in between the two ships but the other side under this tarp to see how quickly i can get this gun ready to shoot if need be oh yeah you could you you you, you peel back the tarp and yeah there's a big 50 cal under there and now you, you is it swivel. floating or is this thing like hoisted up on the boat like, it's floating it's holding it it's on floating an arm? yeah it's floating next to the boat it's like active okay. control or something yeah all right well yeah and then I, you you the two of you hear them shout hey hey there's they're, they're underwater they're underwater. That they've caught. They caught one under the under the boat. Can I get the boat uh, ready? The sh the little boat. Can I get it ready to, um, like ready to go, hot wire wise? Like make a. Make You're gonna it. fire it up. I'm gonna start unloading. Yeah, I was gonna, gonna say. fire it. Up. I wasn't gonna fire it up yet. I just want to like okay. get it ready to go. Like make my, um. The uh, make my driving check now to hotwire it, but then wait till cool. you know, wait and not actually. Yeah, to hotwire it, I'm gonna say it's gonna be a basic Fired tech up. roll, which is I know you, you're oh, not you're not um, trained in, I believe, basic tech. Uh, so okay. it would be a D10 plus your tech, which is a nine. No, that's not you. Never mind. Your tech is a four. It'd be a D10 plus four. Um. And your education, no, no bonus from education. No, they didn't just leave the key in, or there's no, no keys they didn't to just their leave boat the key tied there. up to their boat? Yeah, they didn't leave the key in there. All right. So you're going to have to try and hotwire this thing. So D10 plus your plus your tech, which was what? Was it a two? A oh, four, I'm sorry. D10 plus four. Oh, critical, critical failure. failure. Again, two. And subtract it. Yeah. Or roll another D10? Yeah. Oh, oh all right. no. negative five. <laughs> um, so you go to you I go to short, I, I, I shorted out and now it won't now. I, yeah, oh, you right. short out. I was gonna say you flood the engine, but yeah, you short this thing out. So it's, it's, it's not gonna be here like flickering and hissing. I, I'm, I'm on the radio. Hey Drew, you better get ready. To <laughs> yeah. Uh, while while radios. that's been going on, have I been able to do uh, it. Uh, get? further through the um sure let's roll let's hop back to true and do the interface roll so you want to get further in yeah make um, me an interface roll yeah here good so you what where what did you want to do with that You're um i just wanted to get as high up um uh, on the net like sort of permissions as possible um so like each level so you're up two levels now i'm on two yep okay one uh, more and you'd be at the highest level Awesome, yeah. You're in. 
Cool. And nice. uh, can I jam their radios with my yes. last action here? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Super loud feedback. Blow Do you have any luck left? There's a difficulty of 14. Yeah, I can I can blow that. Okay. All right. The radios are out. Mm-hmm. They're, yeah, I, they're I, actually, to... I, uh, if I could do like a, a blowout of the speaker, it's just like a uh, blast. Uh, like uh, feedback? Blast yeah. Sure. And then like using that to disable. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you guys on the boat, on the little boat there next to it, you just hear like, <laughs> and like this audio blare. And then like a, an explosion, it sounds like which is like uh, the speakers on all of their, their walkie-talkies or whatever it, devices it, it is blowing uh, out. So you got on the radio. Jury Vance, how's it going? Yeah, Vance is just kind of frozen in time at this point. Uh, mine's planted hidden to you. Yeah. All right, so Vance. Out. We got to call Drew in. Vance, you got these two frogmen. Jury sees them too now. Oh, I do. Can yeah, I take Jerry, a shot you turn and see. as I'm heading for the boat? You can take a shot. I'll give you a free attack or like a surprise round because they don't know you're there. That's a hit. Um, just to clarify, my plan is to just try and get my explosives attached at this yes, point. Yes, that's right. So th <laughs> these guys yes. are wearing scuba gear. There's no armor. Roll me 3d6 for your... 3d6? Yeah, for your... Oh. It, it's the same as a heavy pistol. I just rolled that button. That sucks. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Pair of ones. Okay, so uh, harpoon or spear lets out of your gun and it sinks like right into the chest of one of these frogmen. He starts like withering in the water and trying to pull it out. And, and then I, I keep swimming for the boat. Yeah. All right, we'll go over to you, Vance. So one of these guys, all of a sudden, just a spear came out of the darkness and slammed into one of these guys and he's now trying to pull it out. So there's another frogman there. Looking at you, that hasn't fired his, his his gun, his pistol. I was gonna say. Yeah, I'm just gonna um stay. I just keep trying to evade any shots and not I'm not gonna shoot at anybody. Um, oh, you you always, always get to things. evade no matter what, so you can still try to shoot. Uh, okay, well I want to plant plant explosives. Okay, instead. you're just gonna you're just gonna swim away and plant the explosives. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna yeah. swim underneath the boat and sure. You know where he can't shoot me anymore. Uh, he's <laughs> gonna. Hopefully, that's enough cover. Attempt to follow you. Uh, he rolled a two right. to try and hit you. All Even right. with your bonuses, unless you roll critical, uh, you can roll roll your evasion again. Oh, sorry. To uh, avoid it. Yeah, nice. you're good. So he swims towards you, fires, and the spear hits the boat. <laughs> Wriggly fish. So you get um. You get your explosive planted, one of two, and this guy, uh, this guy pulls out a knife from his belt and he starts. He continues to swim towards you, and I'm gonna say you plant the second explosive, but there's now him between you and the boat, and you don't see jury anywhere. Of course, he can move at thirty with that little. Oh thing yeah, on. you can zoom right past him, can't you? Yeah. Okay, well never mind. Yeah, you just zoom right past him towards. I wanna. The I wanna. Can can I do like a drive by stabbing with my knife? Yeah, yeah you, you can make me a melee careful. attack. Go for it. Right, be careful. Yeah, he'll yeah, be in too, <laughs> Just cut his air hose. Right, but I don't have ranks in melee, so I'm just going to punch him in the side. I'm just going to punch him on sure. the way there. That, Pull his mask off. That's his evasion. Ooh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> All nice. right, you punch him. Uh, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna give you um 3d6 damage because you're being propelled. Ouch. All right, Extra this is going to say... Same deal with uh, uh, Zoke. Uh, I was going to say heavy pistol. but Damn. Yeah, you sucker punch him and you Boy. pull his mask off as you go by and he starts like freaking <laughs> out and flailing. That's awesome. uh, oh, that's so, beautiful. Jury, while this is happening, you get to the boat, you pop your head up, and uh, the engine is not running. Things things are not going to plan. Going? Come on. Fire this thing up. I'm yelling at Jury, not Crush. <laughs> or Crash, I'm sorry. He's the driver. What do you mean? <laughs> Something fried. And then, then I look and see what happens. Like, what the <laughs> hell did you do? Start messing. With it. There's panic on the boat adjacent see, to you where's, right now. Guys are yelling Vince? like crazy in Spanish. Are, are all of the um, are all of the um, charges in place? Or? Yes, all uh, four of them are in place. 
I, I run the engine and uh, have them uh, start to um, uh, just uh, drive away. You gotta come pick us up. No, no the, I'm, I'm, I'm running. I'm here. running the uh, the Colombian boat uh, as far away from y'all as possible. Oh, oh well, cool. they're still attached to it. It's like they're uh, tied to say, it. I just well, say cut the rope. Cut the rope. I got. And nice, you're gonna you're gonna control the boat. All right. Um. Of hacking. You no, know, I think I think as soon as I fried the engine, I I, I would have jumped back in the water and started heading back towards the speedboat. Well, now was it no, irreparable? No. Oh, uh, and I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, that's that. up to the GM. I'm gonna say I, in this situation, the the intensity right now, yeah, you're not gonna have time to get it going. Right. Okay. Well, I'm on. I'm still on the gun though. I'm not jumping in the water yet. I'm trying to get us loose then from the other boat. All right, so you've got your knife because you guys had knives. You had diving knives. Yeah. You're 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 furiously trying to cut this uh, the rope off, and I'm gonna say you get it. And um, so it starts to drift further away from you, and you you give the word to Drew that it's it's loose. Yeah, it's like, and everybody's uh, out of the blast radius. I would hope so. <laughs> yeah, so this thing starts the engine start up and you start to just drive it further and further away and you hear shouting. Crichton, do you want to open up on these guys as it's yeah. driving away? Yeah. Crichton's on Crichton. 50 cal just <laughs> at them as, as they're driving away. Sweet. Crichton, um, you think you could hit those explosives from here? Hmm. They're under the boat. Yeah, they're underwater. Can, can maybe I blow a, them? Maybe a gas tank? If I get a crazy good roll? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can roll to see if you have a gas tank. I'll give you that. Why not? Or at least a guy on the. At least somebody helps. Yeah, the, uh, we'll the see. Jack. Uh, nah, just average roll. Yeah, it just. I mean, that would hit. Hit a guy. There's some holes in the. Um. Yeah. Somebody roll me twenty d ten. That's gonna be the damage on this boat. Holy shit! Uh, I can do. Whoever rolls the most ones don't do it. Yeah, I rolled way too <laughs> many ones. I rolled several. Yeah, I, I can bad. Roll. Cool. I'll get I'll, I'll get an okay one hopefully. Ninety. Oh, nice. sweet. So this thing is speeding away into the night. All of a sudden, <laughs> the four explosions go off one after another, and just a fireball shoots up into the night sky. And you hear screaming. You see guys jumping overboard, and this thing is blown to high heaven. Within minutes, your phones go off. Your agent. There's a note. Deposit to your account the remainder of the cash, and a, nice. and, a, and a message from Krona saying we will do business again. Yeah, and we nice. go home. I send and back I'm, a heart, and I'm keeping this damn fifty cal. <laughs> yeah, you got a helicopter now. You got a fifty cal. <laughs> what a, Hell what yeah. else? Oh, you, you got a Craig, dead guy in your Craig, trunk. We we got we might we got to mount that to the back of the sedan and build Sounds you a little, good. Yeah. little chair back I there. I have jury rig something up there. Hell yeah. There we go. That's awesome. That was the end of the adventure. I know we've gone half an hour over. We normally do, and my East Coasters are probably it's probably killing them. So yeah, I I'm four and a half hours to wake up. Yes, I won't keep you too long. So thank you for playing. You're crazy. Thank I'm, you for I'm, all the uh, people who joined us tonight. We had a whole bunch yeah. of people. Oh, it was awesome. Followers. That was we had awesome. a new subscriber. We got Jake and Catheter, who's still here. Thank you Sweet. for subscribing. Oh, yeah, appreciate it. Um, we yeah. need two more people in Call of Cthulhu on uh, Sunday, so join us. I'm just kidding. We don't. That'd be <laughs> awesome, though. That'd be like 12 people in that group. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, you, it, it, not yes. 12, but it'd be a lot. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody, uh, for our regulars, for our new people. Really, really appreciate it. We had the raid. Uh, have a good night. If you liked Cyberpunk Red, what you saw, or awesome. Forlorn Hope, the mission from Forlorn Hope, you can buy these on Drive to RPG. The link down below. But have a good night, everybody, and uh, we'll be back on Tuesday. Not everyone. No, good night. Good night. 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 All right.